All right. Hey, thanks a lot for doing this, man. I appreciate it. Um, I, I know it's uh, there, it's kind of twofold. One, we want, I want to hear about you, but also what you're doing for the community is just top notch. I can't I can't thank you enough for what you're doing for those guys. I mean, that's like Tom and I were kind of talking about it before, and it's it's like there was, and I've talked to some other guys that have gotten out, and um, the tap thing for. And we can say this till the end, but I just want to cut, touch on it right now. But I, I just wanted to say how cool it was you guys are doing this because it 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 really is no roadmap for a guy like us or guys like us because it, it's not specific. It's not you know it's not exactly what we need. So it's it's a real broad brush kind of a thing for general Air Force kind of stuff or even military. And frankly, yeah. Um. But uh. But anyway, well, let, I just want to say thanks for doing that. I thought I appreciate what you're doing. And, and, and yeah, it's my pleasure, up. man. Yeah, my pleasure, dude. Yeah, it's it, and you, you hit the you hit the nail on the head like there's so much stuff out there and it's not consolidated in one spot. So yeah. that's kind of what really, I mean, we can jump right into that, man. Like that's kind of what really just jumped into this piece was, um, I was doing my transition out. So I ended up doing, you know, 20 years and 12 days, total active military service and, and okay. nothing more. So, you know, they got 12 <laughs> extra days out of me kind of thing. Right. <laughs> right. And so like, uh, that was one of the things where, um, as I was starting my transition out, uh, which, you know, it wasn't expected per se. I mean, it, it was to some degree, um, but it was also one of those things where I just kind of hit those moments. So, you know, I guess what I can probably do is just start, kind of start out with my career wise. Right. Yeah. Like, I think right? that'd be great. Yeah. I'd love to hear where you came from and like how you yeah. got in the military and then kind of net, we'll just naturally get to that point where you, you felt like you were going to get out and you're, there was no roadmap for you. So yeah, yeah let's, let's hear, let's hear your, your beginnings, my, my beginnings, man. So, uh, <laughs> I grew up in North Carolina, so it was kind of crazy, uh, kind of the origin story, if you will. Uh, my grandfather was the equivalent to like the Dr. Fauci, but in a better version for Venezuela. So, oh, really? Yeah, dude. So he wow. was coming up to Duke University in North Carolina. And this is back, I was born in 84. So, you know, back in the 80s when there's a lot of research being done for AIDS and a lot of other things like that, man. And yeah. Um, so, yeah, my, my grandfather came up here, brought my uh, my father and uh, bing, bada, boom, here I am. So, uh <laughs> that ended up happening. My mother's actually from West Virginia, and then they moved down to Lexington, North Carolina. So if you see okay. ever uh, like Lexington furniture or anything like that, right? Yeah, yeah. from Lexington, North Carolina. So uh, okay. so I grew up in that area, man, and um, yeah, I had a crazy childhood. Like uh, had parental abduction or parental kidnapping when I was uh, seven. It's with oh Venezuela God. back in the nineties. I was there for about eighteen months or so, I think, roughly after eighteen months. And so that was pretty crazy, man. Me and my little brother <laughs> were visiting my grandparents during the 90s and if, uh, if you remember anything from history on that piece in venezuela uh that was when the civil war was going on so they okay. had like dude i remember looking I, it's kind of funny like stuff you forget about as a kid right but i was looking back on it and like i remember seeing like uh molotov cocktails and riots and stuff being thrown on the streets like armored personnel carriers like driving through the streets all this crazy stuff Jeez. i thought it was cool because like we're in a high-rise apartment I'm like, oh, G.I. Joe stuff. This is cool. This is awesome. <laughs> right, yeah. It was like in my early 20s, I was like, you know, that was actually like a civil war going on down <laughs> yeah. there. Like, that shit's crazy, man. Now you were in danger at that point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty crazy, man. And we, um, yeah. So, uh, so I lived in there for about uh, 18 months. It was kind of funny. My uh, mom hired a group, an organization out of, um, out of Bragg, and it was a bunch of retirees. And so they basically were going to come with uh, COA 1 and COA 2. COA 1 was, I was going to be, um, they were going to go based. My mom was going to basically reach out to my father and say, Hey, look, I've got a million dollar inheritance. I want our family back, yada, yada, yada. Koa two, they were going to actually like come down there and like pose as reporters and then kidnap me and my little brother back and bring us back. Cause Venezuela is a non extradition state. So yeah, dude, pretty crazy. Right. So that, was, that, yeah. that brings us up to third grade. Uh, <laughs> third grade from there on was pretty normal, man. I had, a, I had an incredible dad. Um, and, well, wait a minute. Uh, so which Koa, what, ha what, what did you know? Oh. Did it yeah, whatever would have happened. How'd you get back? Hey, just stay tuned. That'll be on the next podcast. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's beta no, man, yeah. Like, yeah, no, yeah. no. Co one worked. Co one worked. Okay, good, uh, good. Yeah, I remember getting escorted by a guy in a suit, and I'm thinking he was a Department of State guy that was like escorting us back. Because I remember going to the embassy and doing all this other kind of crazy wazoo stuff. Oh, but I was like nine at this phase, and I mean, we're talking third grade, third grade ish time frame or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, man, pretty crazy, like kind of childhood in that sense. And then you know, I ended up getting into football. Uh, fifth grade and playing football. And I think that ended up being like the main thing in my life, man, was just being a part of a team. And, yeah. um, you know, I ended up, I was kind of funny. The first game I ever played was uh, I ended up getting in trouble because I was too busy checking out the cheerleaders than actually like <laughs> playing the game. So I got, you know, set out, but 
Yeah, man. Uh, I, I did. I excelled well in high school. I started my um, varsity my freshman year and then transferred into uh, just kept playing through that. I was going to get recruited to play college football, NC State, Wake Forest, ECU, that kind of thing. Yeah. Meeting the coaches, checking out the locker rooms, all that stuff. And wow. um, yeah, dude. And then 9-11 happened. I was a junior in high school. And it was like, OK, we've got to we got to go and fight. We got to go and get after this. Plus, you know, from a college degree standpoint, you get knocked out or you get an injury in your legs or something like that. And you know, there goes your scholarship kind of thing. So I was right. like, okay, well, you know, if I go the military route and go and fight, we can get after it. I can also like get college and get my degree and that kind of stuff. So I ended up doing the army national guard, uh, North Carolina army national guard, my uh, junior year of high school, did the whole basic training between my junior, senior year, lost a lot of weight. It was great. <laughs> Came back, finished my senior year of high school, man. And, uh, I ended up actually graduating high school early in North Carolina. You can do it in December. So mm -hmm. I graduated high school early, brother, and just, um, yeah, just freaking loved it, man. Like, uh, went full Army National Guard and was doing some ADSW work. I wasn't full AGR. I wasn't full, like, full time, but it was, uh, you know, I was getting active duty days, if you will. And sure. everybody in my, uh, I was an MLRS crew member, so a 13 Mike. Oh, really? Nice. Yeah. Yeah, dude. So, uh, <laughs> and uh, everybody I was talking to, they, they would say, you know, if they could do it every and they, they'd join the Air Force. I'm like, what? man if you guys are saying this and you're like you know you guys have been in a lot longer I me mean, we're talking captains and starting first class and stuff like that i'm like okay join the air force so the first two the first two recruiters are like wait a minute your, your price now nah, your prior service never going to happen not possible i'm like <laughs> yeah this seems off like it seems like i should be able to yeah um third recruiter down in charlotte north carolina i called him up clifton fulkerson actually command sergeant major clifton fulkerson now um, called him up and he's like, yeah, dude, I've already hit my quota for a month. This will be a good training experience for me. And sure, shit, man, 15 minutes later, after like meeting up with him, I was able to get signed up and came in combat control. Um, he was basically saying, Hey, you don't want to do TACP because TACP is like, you're basically part of the army and you're, you don't want to do that anymore because you're leaving the army. I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, combat, he's like, you want to, you know, you want to shoot people or you want to save people? I'm like, well, medical is kind of cool, but tell me more about combat control. So I did that crushed in doc. Um, and dude, I was actually, man, NDOC was fun. It was a lot of fun, man. I got smoked obviously, but, yeah. um, it was September of 2004 and, uh, correction, 2003 and my son was due. So I, I had gotten married super young, man. I was married. I was married before I actually technically graduated high school from walking okay. you know, 22 out of class 2003. And, um, she was pregnant and, and our kid was due in January. And I said, Hey guys, like, can I be there for my kid being born? You're like, nope, you missed more in two days of ATC, you're going to get washed back. And I was like, well, dude, this is training. Like, if this is yeah. deployment, yeah, I get it. I'll, I'll sacrifice being there for my son being born for a deployment. But for training, like, come yeah. on, man. It's not life or death, right? Yeah. yeah, right. So I ended up throwing a towel, ended up going to rescue and doing life support. And I was like, okay, life support, that's medical. That's kind of cool. Nope, <laughs> nope, not at all. The closest thing to medical is wiping snot off of visors after people do post flight inspections. Right, right. Fortunately, I was in rescue and I worked with rescue of a uh, 55th RQS out of Davis Monthan, man. And that was pretty cool. I, great people, great community, man. It's a special place in my heart for PJs and just the rescue community. Yeah. Um, in fact, the actual lieutenant that met me there uh, was the um, oversaw my retirement. Uh, he's now he retired as a colonel, Colonel Brown, Carlos Brown, just a solid man, solid, great friend and mentor. And yeah, it was funny, man. When I first walked into their office, I'm I'm eight up, like army eight up, like standing at attention, talking to officers and all this other kind of stuff. They're like, "Whoa, what are you, what are you doing?" <laughs> Scaring and, people and stuff. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, and uh, yeah, man. So like, um, ended up cross training. Uh, so it was kind of funny, man. It took me a year and a half to cross train to TACP. Yeah. Um, because after I found out what the job was, I was like, "Holy shit, this is right up my alley. It's exactly what I want to do." Right. And so, uh, dude, I, here I was, I was in Balad in uh, Balad, Iraq. And it's like the day is the day today is the day where I can actually cross train. Cause the first year, the year, previous year, the guy's like, Oh, your prior service. No, you can't cross train early. You gotta, you gotta do your, you know, at least half of your, your uh, commitment. Yeah. I said, like, whatever, more training. I was getting better shape, whatever, that kind of stuff. Right. So dude, I'm in Balad. It's like the day and I go and I like click on that. This is October of 2006. And I go in there and I'm like looking at the computer NPF and I'm like, click volunteer to cross train. It says you're outside your window to cross train. I was like, what the, like, are you serious? So dude, like JD, like I ended up going back and forth. So young senior M and Via Lobos here was talking, going back and forth with AFPC from uh, October all the way to March. And I ended up reading, they're getting a hold of their AFI and like going through and reading their AFI and like reading all the different stuff. And I remember talking to some master sergeant. I was like, look lady, like, <laughs> Here's the deal. This is what your AFI is, is says, and you're contradicting that by what you're telling me. And she's like, you know what, Aaron Villalobos, you're absolutely right. And so the next day, I had a class date for TACP. Nice. 
Right yeah, on. man. I, yeah, I was in 07, man. And uh, went through Crush Course. I loved it, man. It was. It had a great time. Actually, there's a video going around of me. I don't know if it's still out there or not, but I was pulling like three foot of galls of Mer- uh, like uh, from MRSA. That was part of MRSA there at Herbie. Uh, oh, yeah. it was in those, that era. Um, but yeah, dude, I crushed it. I had a blast. Ended up, I actually was going to Colorado Springs, but uh, they offered me to be airborne. So I said, yeah, dude. I, so I went to the 14th ASOS and nice. did some time there. Then I ended up getting to the, third, or the 18th ASOG. Um, and then for breadth of experience, I went to the 682nd ASOC, which was different. It was good. That's whenever yeah. I opened up Cleared Hot Yoga because I had so much extra time on my hands because uh, they're <laughs> like, hey, you're going to be a Jarno. And I was like, all right, so I don't jump anymore. I don't control anymore. And I'm basically going to just take a 1972 from a radio or TACP cast. I'm like, what am I going to do with all this extra time? So yeah. uh, it ended up being good, though, man. We started a JTAC program up for the ASOC, and then they ended up closing the ASOC out. But uh, I got the congrats, you're going to be a PME instructor uh, email, which was... Oh, really? Dude, I thought I was getting punked. I thought like <laughs> I thought Mark Foster, a really good friend of mine, I thought Mark was sending an email like he was trying to just play a joke for me up at the Pentagon. I called him up, and I was like, hey, Mark, like, what the hell, man? We don't, we don't do this. He's like, oh man, it's gonna be really great for your career, man. It's gonna be really good. Yada, yada, yada. And I was like, uh, maybe, but come on. Uh, dude, I literally just opened up cleared hot yoga like a month before. And so I'm sitting here, I've been at Bragg. Now I've been on Bragg for about nine years at this point. I was like, okay, yeah. like, man, I'm just going to be one of the lifers here at Bragg. And well, I was fine with it. Like, you know, kids were in school and everything was set up and I love the mission there. So dude, like, uh, yeah, like we, we ended up, uh, I tried to go out for the 118th. They had an active duty slot that was perfect and it just didn't work out. Um, I actually was even going a warrant officer route and being like, okay, the guy, actually a friend of mine, he's like, Hey man, um, you want me to command sponsor you to be a fixed wing aviator for the warrant, uh, in the army national guard. And I was like, yeah, like that would yeah. be freaking awesome. Like, and then as I was going through the train, as I was going, getting ready to set up, one of the guys was a prior tech sergeant and Maybe he's looking out for him. Maybe he wasn't. I don't know. Uh, but he's like, hey, man, let's just do the math here. You're going to be at 16 years whenever you cross over. Um, the Army's not going to let you retire at 20. Like, they're going to get their money out of it. They're about to spend millions of dollars on your training. Like, you're not going to retire at 20. So just keep that in mind. And I was like, ah, do I really want to do this, like, long, long extended out period and not not collect a pension? So I ended up saying, okay, I ended up talking to my wife. Uh, I ended up remarrying and uh, beautiful, three beautiful kids. I get to be their dad. And, and dude, like, I was like, babe, I guess there's something in Florida. Now, JD, of all places, Panama City, man, not a bad place to be. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Definitely worse definitely... places for sure. Yeah. Oh, dude, Wichita Falls. Like, oh, I mean, so many different places, right? So, right. yeah, man, I ended up, uh, we ended up accepting the orders and going down there. And um, that was a, that was a different experience, brother. Like, it was one of those things where I went to the instructor schoolhouse. And the day I graduated, they're like, hey, congratulations. You're now officially at eight tango zero zero zero. Uh lose the beret, lose the boots. And I was, dude, I'm not gonna lie, man. I felt like emasculated. I felt yeah. like part of me was taken away. I was like, well, do I lose the ribbons too? Because that's I earned all these ribbons too, whenever that kind of stuff. Like, no, no, you can keep the ribbons. And so I was like, okay, well, I don't want to be that guy, because obviously our community's kind of, you know, got that hey, yeah, well, yeah. chip on our shoulders and all this other kind of jazz. I'm like, all right, so I need to I need to plug in with this and plug in with the team and everything else. And dude, I ended up going down and um, getting plugged in with uh, Airy NCO Academy. And I was down there for a year. I ended up being their uh, interim first sergeant uh, for that piece. Nice. Or not, inter- not really interim first sergeant. It was more of a cubic zirconia first sergeant because I was okay. like, I'm in wear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was pretty cool, man. I went down there with a line number for master. And uh, dude, that was uh, different. It was different. You know, one of the things I learned about PME um, is that they romanticize a lot by the style of leadership we bring. You know, you mm-hmm. see it on the whole, you know, becoming a combat airman and all this other kind of stuff, yeah. all their marketing and everything. But when you get in the room with them, it, it's, it can be, um, we easily intimidate people because we're straightforward, direct, honest. We look people in the eye. Uh, we don't bullshit. And if we do, it's because we're being sarcastic and trying to break something <laughs> right. into the room, right? <laughs> um <laughs> But it's one of those, man, it was just a different arena. It was definitely a DNF, not necessarily bad. I learned a lot in that arena about myself and how to interact with others. But, you know, I got to see corporate Air Force, if you sure. will. And then, of course, Hurricane Michael hit, man. And, uh, dude, like Hurricane Michael, we, it was funny. Um, I was given a safety brief on Friday, you know, right before uh, Columbus Day weekend. Uh-huh. And I said, like, hey, guys, there's a tropical storm off the Yucatan Peninsula. 
welcome to Florida, right? Like it's no big deal and that kind of stuff. And dude, we, we end up recalling 180 students back on that Monday afternoon, like get out and go a hundred miles in. <laughs> like, this is going to be real. <laughs> and um, yeah, we ended up being, man, we were evacuated for six months. Like my, our family was bouncing Jeez. around from like house to house, Airbnb. Cause it was one of those things where they were trying to figure out, are we going to try to rebuild an area or do we need to move the schools to another location? Yeah. And of course, Congress and other things, lobbyists and everything else is getting plugged in of like trying to get all that money. I mean, 180 students for six weeks, that's a lot of money coming into your city, into your state. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, man, it would be like, hey, you're getting orders in like three weeks. We're like, okay, Airbnb is going to be for three weeks, maybe four weeks. And then from there, we're going to go. And then it's like, you get to that three, four week mark. Like, oh, no, no, no. It's another like Thanksgiving. You're going to get orders on Thanksgiving. And it's like, okay. Yeah, that had to be frustrating, man. Just <laughs> not knowing what you, exactly what's going to happen. And, you know, just the uncertainty of it had to just be exhausting. It was, man. Well, that was one of the challenges, you know, being the first sergeant, I still had 22, we had 24 people on staff. So, you know, I was still working with a commandant and the director of education. So managing that and tracking and, you know, we were, we were allowed to go anywhere across the country uh, yeah. that we wanted to. So there, there were some challenges with that piece, but it wasn't too difficult hard. Just, it was all about streamlining information and that's what sure. we do, man. And that's one of the things I learned a lot about um, our job, even sitting as a PME instructor, it's funny, the similarities of controlling when you're controlling the room versus controlling out on the range or, you know, and, the, and fighting and that kind of stuff, because yeah. you've got your, you've got your, your syllabus, you got your curriculum right there in front of you. So you're, you're maintaining and battle tracking where you're at, but you're also got like six, 14 to 16 different people in the room. And you're having to make sure like, you know, you got some people that talk a lot. All right. this guy. <laughs> uh, then you got the other guys that are like, they just don't want to say anything. They're just there and don't look at me kind of thing. So you've got yeah. to balance the room out real time and actively engage and drive the conversation where it's more of a guided discussion kind of thing sure, sure. Um, versus an actual, you know, you get up there and just squawk the entire time and people don't right. listen, I think. So, um, but yeah, man, I ended up kind of working. It was kind of funny, dude. Uh, when we moved up to the NCO Academy up to uh, Montgomery, Alabama, that's where they finally decided to take us up there. Overnight, I became the first sergeant. I'm still that. I was a faculty uh, director. I was the director of education. I was the interim commandant. And I was also a substitute instructor on top Jeez. of being like the guy kind of helping running day-to-day -day operations and everything. So, but dude, JD, it was awesome because being the, the director of education, when I got up there, I was like, wait a minute. So as director of education, I can kind of set the schedule and everything. Oh yeah, you could totally do that. I was like, sweet. I'm like, nice. and I've got some left and right limits on the timelines and everything. Like, yeah, you, you basically make sure you meet the intent of the curriculum and you're good to go. I was like, sweet. We're doing PT every day. And so right. for at least four classes, man, we had PT every day. Mondays and Thursdays were our cardio days. Uh, Tuesdays and Fridays were our run days. Wednesdays I actually taught yoga uh, to everybody. Our active recovery is how I presented it to them. And after nice. class, we're like, we just did a yoga class. And I was like, yep, you sure did. <laughs> Guess right, what? Right. You're still masculine. <laughs> yeah, think, exactly. right? No no skinny jeans or no, uh, no, uh, no yoga pants or anything like that, right? So, <laughs> All right. yeah, dude. Um, it was, it was a good experience. I learned a lot in that sense. And then I came back to the 13 ASOS here at Colorado Springs is where I currently am now. And, uh, man, I got plugged in with the, uh, the team. It was great to get back. There was definitely a lot of challenges because we got here in 2020. So we're just getting out of COVID, oh, just yeah. getting guys from, you know, being kind of off for a year to kind of get them back in the fighting shape kind of thing. So, yeah. um, I, I'm not gonna lie, man, the first three months, four months of being flight chief, my guys, I was like, Fuck these guys, like, <laughs> man, and my wife was kind of hearing me like, just kind of vent about it. But dude, it was just, I wasn't giving up on them. I was just pushing them. It was a lot of like pushing and making them uncomfortable and like making them go and making them go. And me and the flight commander uh, would have a lot of closed door meetings, kind of like, hey man, yeah, these guys have had a year off. Like, I don't feel sorry for them at all. If we need to work yeah. and get them in fighting shape, that's what I care about more than actually making them feel good. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and dude, I tell you what, man, that paid off because about like month five or six, dude, these guys are doing some incredible training on their own. I'm not having to babysit them or anything. Like they were taking stuff and running for it, running with it. And it's super proud of them. Even still to this day, I was super proud. Probably the best part of my career uh, was being flight chief. And then I ended up going and being an operations superintendent or the interim operations superintendent. And uh, that was good, man. Just, uh, just a different arena, just a different arena trying to play kind of like the, uh, you know, still trying to lead, lead with tenacity, but, you just got some challenges there with that piece. And some people don't necessarily accept that, which is fine. And, you know, kind of that moment, you know, like uh, when you realize like, okay, you're kind of done that kind of thing. Right. That yeah. moment was uh, for me, I had a couple of situations that was like that, but you know, it was one of those areas, man, where um, 
I think the Air Force, you know, current state, and this is maybe this is because I'm a retiree, you know, is I can say this, you know, but it's like, it's just one of those things where I'm like, uh, I was sitting in a meeting and uh, with a top six leadership team and we're sitting there talking and I was like, hey guys, like, I think we're going about this training plan just a little bit off. And uh, I'm like, you know, I played high school football. We would watch the tapes on Monday of the game we played on Friday and we'd watch it so intimately that we make fun, you know, lessons learned from the previous tapes, but was really important. And I played middle linebacker was to watch the tapes of the next team that we're getting ready to play. Yeah. And I said, you know, as a middle linebacker, let's just say a team I was getting ready to play against had the option or, you know, whatever formation style they, they did. I would see that play out 30, 40, 50 times. So almost it was muscle memory whenever it came, came time for kickoff. And so whenever we played, I knew what was going to happen. I could almost anticipate it. Sure. And uh, I'm like, our boys need to study our adversaries so intimately that they know what they're going to do, kind of almost predictive of what they're going to do and how they're going to react and their dispositions and even hell, even their Facebook pages, if we want to really get stupid crazy with it. Sure. I'm like, so they got to look like our boys need to study that. It's like, hey, no, sorry, I really like where your head's at, but we really need to work on our radio inventories right now and getting that locked in. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, like I agree with you 100 percent, but I've got a swim superintendent, which is support, you know, support superintendent. Yeah. I've got a support flight chief and I've got a supply NCIC. If those three knuckleheads can't do it, why am I as an operator having to go and do that kind of stuff? Like, right. sorry, that's just not, that's not what we're here for. But that was just kind of those moments. I'm like, yeah, just with and some other, other trainings that was coming out and, you know, Afghanistan closed. I think, I think that affected a lot of guys more than we would oh, have bet. Yeah. Give our hand to, you know? Yeah. 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 I can't imagine what having come to that end of that era, you know, I, that would have been weird to be in at that time. Yeah. 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 I mean, even the deployments were different, right? Like the deployments are now a little bit more of just the big dog on the porch versus an actual, you're, you're like, you know, you're getting ready to deploy and go and pull triggers and, and say cleared hot and that kind of thing. Right. Like right, right. just a, just a different mentality. But I will say that the, the men and women of the units out there, man, they, they are kicking ass and taking names. And it's just a diff, it's For just sure. different, right? It's just a little different than what probably whenever we came in and kind of our, our era and generation, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. And so, yeah, they, uh, I ended up uh, now saying, hey, I'm, I'm retiring. I'm done. And uh, that was the first thing I heard is, oh, you're quitting on us? And I was like, dude, like I'm an inch shorter. Like I my body's beat up. I'm ready to move <laughs> right. on to the next chapter. And, and you know, man, the promotion rates were pretty low. Uh, in that yeah. sense too. And I was like, all right, you know, I don't know if you, have you ever read the book, uh, rich dad, poor dad. Yeah. 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 So dude, I just pictured myself being this donkey, like chasing after this carrot, hoping I'm going to get promoted and hoping I'm going to get promoted. And, and, you know, I always felt bad for the chiefs on after the day after results come out, because I'm sure people are banging on the doors like, Hey man, what did I do wrong? And they're gonna be like, yeah, let, let's take a look. Um, so according to this, you didn't do this. It's all like, uh, retro active or this looking yeah, yeah. back. Versus like, where do we need to go? And, and where does that high performance look like? And it was a lot of guesswork. And, and honestly, man, it was going to be those things where I'm going to get promoted to a desk. So I might as well get compensated for it versus for kind sure. of running around and doing that kind of thing. So yeah. I did my best to pass the torch off to the young guys, you know, and, and get those guys trained and, and get them, you know, set up to play a little bit of varsity themselves. And I, I felt pretty proud of them uh, in that sense. And um, man, I just, you know, whenever I was going through my retirement ceremony, the best way to describe it was, you know, when you work out, you probably worked in the yard or worked in like did some physical labor all day long. And yeah. at the end of the day, you're just kind of sitting on the back porch, having a nice drink. And you're just like watching the sunset going, you know what? I'm tired, but that's a beautiful sunset. And I feel very content with life and what I've done and just kind of feeling chillax in that kind of sense, man. So that's just kind of the best way to describe it, you know, be excited for the next day. So, uh, you know, next sunrise to come up. So, yeah, man, I ended up getting out and just getting after and crushing it um, and going that piece. So, yeah. Kind of gets us up to about a year ago. Oh, okay. Oh, so yeah, that's pretty recent for you getting out then. It wasn't. Yeah. Uh, okay. Officially, uh, officially got out one February. Uh, okay. 20, uh, this the uh, DD two fourteen one February. So I uh, got out and got all that stuff taken care of, man. Yeah. Nice. So how did it come about where uh, you went from that to doing what you're doing now, like for the 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 TAPS program? Like how did yeah. that how did all that come to fruition? So, dude, uh, as I'm going through this uh, stuff, I had a lot of key, great mentors. Like, you know, even going five about five years back when as I was doing that PME stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, Mark Foster, again, saying his name, I love the man, he's a brother of mine. Uh, he's like, V, this is what you got to do, man. You need to go on LinkedIn and look for different jobs that you'd like to do and then see the requirements of those jobs and see, you know, start going after and start packing away some of those requirements. I'm like, damn, that's a really good idea. Yeah. So, dude, I ended up, you know, doing the PMP and doing some other things like that and different certifications, different things to kind of start offboarding like five years out. 
versus mm-hmm. waiting till like one year out going, oh shit, I'm getting out. Like, what am I going to do now? I need to do all this other kind of stuff last minute. Right. Um, I did get my PNP like literally the day before my retirement ceremony, but that's because I just don't want to pay back and I was procrastinating really bad. But <laughs> yeah, man. Um, so, you know, as I was going through it, um, Kevin Laliberte, uh, good, another good friend of mine and mentor of mine, man, he hit me. Uh, we got connected and he was telling me a little bit of stuff and, and you know, a lot of solid nuggets, man. And I think that's one of the things that's in my life I found is I'm very coachable. You know, I'm really open to listen and learn and grow and apply. I don't necessarily have to adopt everything, but I'm, I'm definitely going to listen. I mean, even hell, whenever I had my, uh, you know, starting first class talking about, oh, man, I should have joined the Air Force instead of go to the Army. You know, just listening <laughs> right, right. and listening, understanding and, and taking those notes in and taking taking that in. But um, so as I'm going through this piece, man, like uh, I reached out to my best friend, Tommy, Tommy Case. And I said, brother, there is a metric ton of resources out there for us. Like, why don't we have this consolidated in like one spot? Because I knew he was a president of the association. He was like, well, it sounds like to me you're volunteering to be the uh, TACB Association Transition Assistance Officer. I was like, yeah, dude, sign me up. Like, what, what do I got to do? Right, and right. so I came up when I was in PME, I came up with like a, a, a six-step process on like how to do change management, project management, that kind of stuff. And, you know, the first step is always just assess the current state. And so our current state, man, it was at the time, I mean, you, you know, we had, a, I think, Hobie, Chief Hobie had put a uh, Facebook, Facebook uh, group together. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it was good. I mean, it was, it was a start and there were some resources there. There's a couple of things there. It was sporadic and messaging at best, but it was definitely a great start and, you know, tip the hat to him, uh, for breaking that ice and getting that started. But it just, man, it just wasn't consistent enough. And it was, right. there's so much more out there for us. So I ended up building our, uh, tacp-tap.org website. Um, just went through Google sites and built that thing. Um, and really I wanted it to be like a checklist and, uh, kind of get guys to kind of go through it. And I just started like meeting with guys that was getting out either through zoom. Um, so people that I know or people said, Hey, you need to talk to V, uh, or just talk to my guys. Cause you know, man, in the last, we had about five senior NCOs get out of the 13 ASOS in the last year. So there was a lot of talent. There's a lot of things getting out that time, but it was one of those things where I was want to share this with my brothers. Cause I'm like, Hey, I found this out. Um, why would I hold it on to this and not share this with the guys I care about and, and working with and that kind of stuff. So, sure. yeah. So I ended up um, building the website and dude, I don't know why, man, like uh, my internship, I learned a lot about scaling and business and everything else like that. And I was thinking to myself, I'm like, dude, like I can't keep doing these hour long sessions of zooms. Like I'm only helping like a one-to-one at a time. Yeah. I'm like, I need to build a class and just do this for a class. And so that's what we did, man. We broke ice and that was our phase two was uh, just getting into like actually developing a class and uh, meeting some intents. And it wasn't replacing taps, but it was more of like a conduit to feed, like let guys know what's out there for you and how to do this and and really get connected with this. But, you know, J.D., one of the things I found, man, I stumbled upon was some incredible metrics. So from our first class we had in January and the class we had here in this past April, um, One of the consistent things that I'm seeing and finding is guys are incredibly, I use this term out of love, they're incredibly insecure and worried about what's going to happen whenever they get out, right? Um, It's things like, how am I going to take care of my family? Uh, I'm going to have a loss of identity. What am I going to do whenever I get out? And then this is, dude, this is from senior airmen all the way to colonels and even chiefs that are saying this kind of level of stuff. And so I think that's been one of the biggest the biggest rewards is being able to give guys just a little bit of clarity and a little bit of like, you know, you can do this, fellas. And and probably one of the biggest things that helped me out as I was going through this is that Kevin Lala birthday helped me out. And uh, he uh, introduced me to the Honor Foundation. And dude, okay. this is a huge shameless plug, man. Like the Honor Foundation, I went from ignorant confidence to like knowing who I was and what I wanted to do, what my priorities were and how to communicate and how to connect and everything else like that. So, and that was in a matter of three months. And so getting guys to recognize and understand that, you know, there's a meme out there. It's the uh, red starship trooper, you know, or the storm trooper that kind of walks in there. And it's like what it feels to be a JTAC walking to the top kind of thing. And you go, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Like that classic. I'm like, you're still that person, even in the civilian sector. Um, and man, and so that's when in January, we had our first class, we had 82 guys sign up for it. It was fluctuating. I think at one point in time, we had 62 guys in the actual classroom, which is pretty cool. But, you know, we didn't want guys to feel like they had to sit there. We wanted guys to like come in and come come and leave and uh, as they as they needed to. Um, and getting coaches program. That was kind of one of the other things, too, is like the, the coaches mentorship program, man. And, and um, that program is designed where it's just helping a little brother out. So as he's getting ready to get out, we've got a, a whole website where they have the different coaches and their bios and what they're helping out, what industry they're in and what's going on. I think we're, we're sitting at roughly 50 strong now nice. of different coaches. 
So when guys go through our class, we'll give them the link. They take a look at the different coaches' bios and go, oh, this guy's in tech or this guy's in drones or this guy's in whatever industry or oh, this guy does. Hell, I had one guy that wanted to be a professional angler. One of my really good friends lives in Tennessee, does professional bass fishing and boats and all that kind of stuff like that. And I'm like, dude, what are the odds? Like, please go talk <laughs> that's to this awesome. guy. Right, that's dude? awesome, yeah. Yeah. And so that's one of the things, man, is like um, – we're now in phase two right now. Phase three, God willing, this coming July, man, is going to be a fully accredited Department of Labor class where guys can go through our TAP program and be able to go through and get a vector tailored approach to TAP. Because that's one of the things, and you probably know this too, man, as you're, as you're getting out. Like, um, one of the things I noticed, I'm sitting here and I'm like, I got a specialist, like an infantry guy. No, no discredit to him, but he's been in like three and a half years. And he's getting out, right? And then I got like some lieutenant colonel or sitting over there is getting out, and we're all sitting in the same classroom getting the same information. Um, no discredit to the to the people of, of TAPS industry, man. They're doing their best, they're doing what they have, and, and but you know, in that arena, man, you've got to have some kind of like connection with your crew. Getting up there and doing a quick twenty minute brief, you know, once every three weeks or two weeks or whatever. There's just this that chasm there. And yeah, so one sure. of the things you know, you probably felt that too, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah, like it's just one of those things where they're trying to do their best to appeal to the masses, where that's not that hardly ever is a good thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's not, yeah. No, it's it's definitely one of those things, man. Where um, it, it's just tough for them, and, and I get what they're trying to do. I mean, it's it's mandated, so they have to do it, right? Right. But uh, but on the flip side, man, one of the things I found is that the talents and stuff that we bring, Eric Sauter, and I'm doing a lot of name dropping just because this is more paying homage to my lineage of who I Please, am. Yeah. Today. So, oh, Clam, uh, <laughs> solid dude. I don't know if you knew Clam or not, but dude, he uh, he's like, as I was up and coming, I was a Romads, you know, back in those days, right? And uh, oh, yeah. he's like, you know, V, this job is 85% coordination and 15% sexy. And if you want to do that sexy, you've got to do all the coordination and collaboration. I mean, dude, that stuck with me. And I was like, okay, smart, man, smart. I got to do all this dirty work of connecting, going to meetings, blah, 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 blah. You know, the stuff that we don't like to do mm-hmm. just so I can get after and do what we do. And man, for the most part of my career, dude, that's, that's, uh, it, it's been great. The stuff I've been able to do and, and get connected with people and, and make things happen is because I've done the coordination and collaboration. And, you know, most of the times, dude, most of the times it's just people just want to be reassured they're not going to jail. Do you have a good okay. medical plan? Do you have a good, like, solid, like, pace plan? What's X, Y? You know, they just want to know that, hey, you've actually thought through all the steps yeah. versus, you know, hey, we want to we do fast trips out of helicopters. Uh, <laughs> okay. Like, <laughs> what's your plan? <laughs> you know, exactly. Kind of yeah. Um, so, yeah, man, that's, um, but, uh, you know, that getting guys to recognize and see that coordination piece, right, is, is such a valuable tool, man, in the private sector. Like, I mean, just to be able to think about it, man, just being able to walk into a room and within minutes, you know how to establish rapport, build trust and know the right person to talk to within minutes of walking into a room. And oh, by the way, now you're going to drop bombs and take lives of the adversaries within minutes. Right yeah. now, probably a little bit longer for that piece, but um but you know that's 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 a superpower in the private sector. Like a For lot sure. of people don't even know how to like look people in the eye these days, much less like establish rapport, build trust, and go and make things happen, right? Definitely. Um, and that's kind of been one of those things where I found like you know even even in the industry I'm in right now, it's it's definitely slow pace, man. It's so much slower pace. Like mm-hmm. uh, my onboarding took like ninety days, and I'm like ninety days, like, holy oh, like, God, like <laughs> exactly. That's a long time. Like, yeah, yeah I feel like a two week left seat, right seat. And you're lucky to get two weeks. It usually ends up being 10 days or five days. Right. Right. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay. And it's, Hey, do you feel comfortable briefing these presentation slides? It's like four slides to PowerPoint. I was like, yeah, I feel like I got it. I feel like I can, <laughs> right. feel like I can speak to it. Yeah. Like, okay, well, 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 let's do a practice run. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, let's, let's do a practice run. Um, <laughs> But I think that's one of those things too, where it's it's just finding your niche, and even even now, man, like as I'm going through my kind of getting back to the stream a little bit, of my story, it, it's finding that um, finding that groove, finding that that mojo, finding that exact thing I kind of want to get after and do. And you know, I've got a solid idea of it. Um, it's just a matter of just timing and just kind sure. of like offboarding. You know, my nickname in, uh, when I was in the Air Force was uh, V Speed, and I thought the guys were trolling me, but like, no, 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 man, you got high speed, and then you got like V Speed. <laughs> and I was like, all right, all right, I'll take that. That's I'll pretty take sweet. That one. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, bad. yeah. Um, and uh, it's it's crazy, man. Like it's been um, 
I don't know, man. I feel like I've been unbridled for the last year, you know, or I say the year it's it last six months, eight months of actually like from my what August. So whatever timeline that is it just is. being unbridled, man, where I can just do what I want to do and, and just get after things and make things happen. Like, um, and get plugged in with different organizations and, and really just help guys out and see that unbridling exists for them too. And I think that's probably, again, been the biggest part is, is getting them to recognize that you can do whatever you want to do and that's okay. And you may not have an idea of what you want to do and that's okay, but just get out there and, and just keep living with that same tenacity, man. Right. So, yeah. No, that's yeah. a good point. I mean, people, sometimes they forget that, uh, that intensity that they had in the military where they were you know, controlling five different assets at once or jumping out of airplanes or ruck marching or whatever, or shooting guns. You can have that same intensity in the, in the private sector. Mm-hmm. And with a guy like you kind of coaching them along and saying, Hey, remember you, when you did this, when you were in you, it's not, yeah, you're not, you know, shooting with your rifle at somebody or whatever, but you're still, you can still address, or you can still attack these, these civilian, you know, tasks and with the same, like you said, tenacity that they did for sure. Yeah. Yeah, spot on, man. And, and you know, it's not about doing more work and work, 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 work. It's more so in a sense of just having that, like, I, I've met several guys and I've got several friends um, that had, they got out and they just jumped right into another GS position or they jumped mm-hmm. into something very similar. And just their quality of life is there's like, yeah, you know, I'm pretty much doing what I did before and, you know, it pays good. Yeah. It's like, fuck me, dude. Like, that seems, like, that seems <laughs> awful. Like, okay, right. great. You've got money in the bank. What are you doing with that? Like yeah. you spend most of your time in these, you know, jobs or whatever. And it's, it's one of those things where it's like, dude, like, you know, what I heard this a long time ago um, was one, we replace slavery with jobs, with pensions, essentially you're, you're basically, yeah. and because you're building somebody else's dream, you're not building what you want to do. And so right. just getting guys to dream again, you know, I think I was having a meeting with a, uh, one of the guys I just met uh, here in the last few weeks, I was talking with him and um, he's like, dude, all I can do is just like call an airstrikes and do some stuff. Like, that's it. Like I just do training and JTAC training, that kind of stuff. I'm like, I just want to shake him. I'm like, no, you can do so much more. Right. right. And um, after our, our weekend hanging out, I was like, all right, brother, we're going to talk and we're going to get connected and dude, just talking with him and going through and just kind of like just showing him stuff on LinkedIn and some of the techniques and some of the different things I learned through the honor foundation and, you know, I think that's a rewarding part, man. I do like 20 hours a week almost on just that on just for, for free, just because, you know, care about the guys, care about the program, want to keep it getting after it. And um, it's those moments when you see those, that light kind of flicker back on that fire kind of, you know, like you're, you've yeah. been working on this fire for a while and then you start seeing it getting stoked and you're like, <laughs> fuck yeah, dude, like go out there and just tackle this life, man. Like go and live it because man, it's just, it's funny. Like, um, we uh, often used to say that I gave the best years of my life to the air force, right? Like my youth, my back and everything else like that, my knees, yeah. all that kind of jazz. But I heard somebody else say that, man, it corrected me. I'm like, no, no, your best years are your years ahead. They're not, you, you didn't give the air force your best years of your life. It's all about your mindset and you're shifting your mindset. Look at it going, yeah, you know what? You're absolutely right. Like the only thing stopping me is me. So right. I'm going to give, I'm going to live my best years now because who knows if tomorrow is promised, you know, that kind of thing. So for sure. Yeah. I mean, the way you should look at it is that they're, they're all your best years. You gave, they were good then they're good now and they're going to be good yeah. in the future. I mean, it's, it doesn't, you don't stop being good. You are the only person that's going to stop you from being good or having dude. good years or whatever. Yeah, dude, spot on, man. And I think that's, you know, I think a lot of guys miss that. They, they really miss that because they, they go back and they almost romanticize my, my little brother, man, God bless him. I love him. He's actually so much better now than he was, but I remember like probably a decade ago we were talking and he was in the army. So I got three, I got three brothers. Two oldest were Navy. One was a Submariner. Like, and I told him, I was like, bro, hats off to you, man. Like, yeah. I will step on an IED and get new legs and be six foot two before I'm in a tin can, you know, down down underneath water and stuff. And he's like, well, yeah. that was the, that was the front lines for me whenever I was, you know, he's, he's much older than me. Um, he's like, that was the front lines back in, you know, the, the late 90s. Uh, let's see, he's 16 years older than me, so probably early 90s. Um, yeah. Yeah, so two older brothers in the Navy. Um I started Army, went Air Force, and my younger brother was in the Army, went the Army route. And it was kind of oh, fun. Right. He was giving me shit, man. He was, uh, I think it was 2005. He was like, hey, man, here's the cheer force going, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, you're in biop unloading C-5s and C-17s. I'm in Afghanistan right now. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, what, what? Like, you know, those yeah. 
Yeah, those but army guys got to be careful who they talk smack to because it's like, what? Wait, what do you do in the army? Yeah, I do. I'm with <laughs> the, yeah. Dude, <laughs> I don't know if you ever had this, man. I loved it whenever uh, guys were like coming in there and especially went to the ABUs. We lost our combat patches and everything. Yeah. And all the flare, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. But I loved it though because, well, I hated it and loved it. I exploited yeah, yeah. it. Kind of both for sure. Yeah. yeah. Well, I would love it because I'd be in the talk or I'd be in like some training event or whatever. And they're like, oh, cheer for us, blah, blah, blah. And they sit there and talk <laughs> shit the entire time. Yeah. And then either one or two things happen. Either one, they just talk to us and they're running their mouths. And then they come up to you like, hey, JD, man, I, I wanted to actually try to be in the Air Force, but my ass got <laughs> yeah. to too low or I got a neck tattoo or some stupid shit like that. I'm like, yeah, because right, you're right. an idiot, right? <laughs> or what's even better is they, they're talking trash about you and then they find out what you do. And they're like, oh, wait a minute, you're, you're Tech Pete? Oh, oh. And you're like, oh, wait, time yeah, out, yeah. man. You, you can't flip and go 180 on me right now. <laughs> right, I'm right. a nerd first. Now, all of a sudden, I'm a cool guy. Yeah, like, no, exactly. no, nah, nah, man, I don't even talk to you kind of thing. Um, God bless the army. I love them. I love yeah, them. Yeah. So it's almost like when you tell them you're tech P, it's like, well, okay, you're one of us almost, you know, so yeah. they kind of, yeah, it's a, on that bro level. So yeah, it is. I mean, yeah. cause really, man, we are, I mean, that's, it's, sure. uh, we, we really, uh, we, especially being in the PME realm, the, yeah. like going back to what I said earlier, man, they, they romanticize about the style of leadership that we bring. Um, and yet when we're there and we're straightforward, we're calling the baby ugly, we're being honest, not because we're trying to be obnoxious, but because, you know, dude, I'm going to tell you the baby's ugly because I care about you and I want to see you be successful, right? Not make you feel good and, you know, be a boost up your ego and make you feel all, you know, safe. And well, like that, that kind of attitude isn't really conducive to good combat operations. That's kind of, that, I think that's where we, all that stuff stems from when you, you're going to the battlefield eventually. So I, I don't have time yeah. to coddle you and tell you how good you are and build you. I, I have to be straight with you so you can learn fast. So we, when you get to the battlefield, you don't do something crazy and get us all killed or, you yeah. know, or get yourself killed or whatever. So Yeah, no, exactly right. And I think that's, uh, that's where we are. Uh, you know, you hear a lot of people now saying, oh, the Air Force is getting softer and weaker. And it's like, yeah, we kind of aren't like the, that level of communication being taught at those senior corporate level management programs. Yeah. Yeah, it is, man. It, it, it's causing a lot of, hey, this is great. I'm sorry I hurt your feelings. However, I want you to be alive and go home to mama and your kids later. Exactly. Like, which would you care about? Feeling good as you bleed out or, you know, feeling a little bit <laughs> right. bad about yourself, but still being a freaking sharp, and, you know, instrument of war. For sure. So, yeah. And they kind of inoculate you against that feeling bad about yourself. The more you hear it, like the more you get not negative feedback, but really constructive criticism, you know, you, you build that armor and you build that thicker skin. So yeah. eventually it doesn't bother you. And you're like, you, you start craving it. You're like, no, it, w I used to get so mad when we'd go out on, on training missions or whatever. And I didn't get any feedback. I'm like, <laughs> sure. I'm not perfect. Surely I did something wrong. Tell yeah. me, give me yeah. some feedback so I can no, grow. No, man, now. you're great. You did a good job, dude. Like you're awesome. Like, yeah. yeah, it was flawless. I'm like, no, no that's not right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, you, man, that's so spot on too, right? And and you know, I think there's um, that is definitely needed, especially while you're in. Um, but I tell you what, man, one of the things I'm finding now, especially through some other programs and some other things, is is definitely the need to take that armor off and just feel love again, dude. And I think that's kind for of sure. one of the things as that that desire and craving for for that criticisms and that stuff almost kind of feeds, at least for me, it felt this almost level of self hatred um, and just self. Yeah. Or just like go 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 and that kind of thing, man. And and uh, I stumbled on some things and found some things like that about that. And uh, dude, incredibly it helped me out incredibly, man. Like it's one of those things where just being able to feel love again and loving again, and you know, doing it in such a way where it's not you know weird and just being okay. present and doing that kind of stuff. But yeah. you know, that's that's this whole thing, this whole program, man. This Air Force Special Warfare Tap. Um, and I'll talk real quick about how that evolved in a minute, but. Dude, it's because I, I care about the guys. Like, it's one thing to say you care about the guys. It's one thing to have a sticker on your vehicle or, you know, whatever, tattoos and that kind of stuff. But it's about showing up and still being for them after the fact. And, you know, I think that's one of the things where after World War II happened, man, like all these veterans got together and they created things like USAA and some other mega crazy companies. And I'm sitting here scratching my head going, why aren't we doing that? We've got access yeah. to so much more than those guys did back in the 40s. We got more access, pretty much. We got more sure, uh, sure. resources, that kind of stuff, right? And, yeah, yeah. And so, man, like it's it's one of those things where I, I sit there and I'm looking at so many talented people, so many talented people um, that are used to an absolutely incredible stuff, man. And, and it's like, how do we lock arms and connect with each other and help each other out in such a way where we're all mutually successful? Because I'll tell you, man, like even in the private sector, looking at it, the simple stuff that we do on a natural, like 
problem solving or making things happen or getting after it. Hell, dude, coming up with a mission statement and, and like goal statement, vision statement for an organization. Stuff that for us, like they'd be like, all right, hey, what's our what's our mission? What are we doing? What, what are we getting after? What are we doing for this first quarter? What are we getting after? That kind of thing. Some companies that doesn't exist. Some companies it's kind of more feel good verbology and it's kind of like busy work versus actually getting after them, like truly making an impact. And when I'm looking left and right, I'm seeing my guys and, and just my brothers and sisters like crushing life. I'm like, all right, we need to be one unified effort because really honestly, man, I'll be on like our country needs us. Our yeah. country needs us and, and more than just calling, you know, saying Claret Hot and kind of going that kind of stuff. We need to be united again. We need to be strong patriots again with spines and saying, hey, look, you can say whatever you want to, but I'm not I'm not backing down. I haven't backed down before and I'm not gonna back down. I'm not about to start. So sure. yeah. Yep. So yeah, man. Um kind of off on a tangent there, but not at all. Uh, no. I mean, that's a good point about taking off the armor and kind of linking up. I mean, that's I think a lot of guys struggle with that. You know, they, they have, they've developed that thick skin w with good reason and they needed it when they were in, but now that they're out, they're kind of trying to find a way to maybe soften it up just a little bit so they can, like you said, so they can feel again, because uh, they get, they, they're searching for something that kind of equates to that experience they had when they're in the military, but yeah. they need to understand that th that particular time in their lives are over. But that doesn't mean their life is over. I mean, they, there's still things to do, and you still have to keep moving forward. And you still have to do great things, but you don't necessarily have to have that intensity and that that combat oriented, you know, focus. Yeah, because. yeah. And you know, man. So talking with my wife, um, we were she was, uh, we were driving up to Denver, you know, Colorado Springs, about an hour to Denver to get to the airport, and uh, we were driving, and as she was driving over something in the middle of the highway, I said, I just for decide for whatever reason decided to share with him, like, you know, babe, have you ever noticed that I never do that? She's like, yeah, actually, yeah, you never do that. I'm like, yeah, because that may be an ID. Like, you know, it's it stupid. And we crazy. were just talking um, about that at work the other day. I, we yeah. were just talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, ha that happens for sure. All the time. And it's not even, it's not even so much like, for some, it may be a uh, fear or whatever, but it's more like a, like, like you were saying before, it's like a muscle memory or like, you're just so used to doing that, that you just yeah. do it without thinking. You're like, well, of course I'm not going to drive over that. You know, I'm, you know, that's just the SOP or whatever. So. Well, and that's just it, man. So I think that's one of the things is like the way our, our, our brains have, I wouldn't say wired have been conditioned to think, sure. right? It's not yeah. a fear thing. Like, Oh God, I'm gonna, there's an ID in the road. Like maybe for right. some guys, not for me, I can only speak for myself. Sure, it's sure. more so in a sense of like, all right, I'm just going to avoid this because in my brain, it's playing out those different scenarios. It's like that Sherlock Holmes thing or whatever, you know, like it's playing out the, yeah. all these crazy scenarios as outlandish and crazy as it is and different courses of actions. And it's one of those like, that could be a course of action that that's that goes by my head and that kind of stuff. And it's not that I'm like you said, it's not about fear. It's not about actually really thinking that's going to happen. It's just one of those things where it still does. It still goes and dude it's been a long time since I've deployed in that sense and that, in that environment kind of thing. And it's yeah. one of those things I'm like, okay, you know, there's nothing necessarily wrong with me. It's just to being aware of it, kind of holding that space. But, you know, get back to that love thing, man. It, it's crazy. Like it's one of those things where we would be willing to like, just go to hours and go to bat for guys and help each other out and like put our lives on the line for each other. And then we get back in the States and it's just kind of like, we become very secluded or very like separated or segregated almost into these different pockets and different things. And, and so like the stuff that you guys are doing, man, getting connected and hearing people's stories and sharing different things, man, I think it's huge because we're going through a lot of the similar shit. Sure. Um, and you know, there's a video, there's an incredible video, dude, such a powerful video. It was on my LinkedIn page, man. And um, you may have seen it. It's, it's the guy and as he's driving, he's got his like full combat gear on. And then he's playing with this. I think kid. I did see that. What go through though? Just yeah, yeah. Time. Well, it's just those different scenes and where everybody else is in normal clothes and he's there with his family and they're out there and that kind of stuff. Yeah, he's got his full kit on, and then he goes to start swimming out to the the lake with his kids, and he's got his full like helmet on, body armor on. And he starts sinking and that kind of stuff like that. And man, dude, that hit hard home. Like that was one of those things. I'm like, yeah, like even going backpacking. I'm still working on this a little bit, but even going backpacking, man, like um, for the longest time, and it's still probably even you know the last even the last backpacking trip I did. Um, I don't sleep well. I usually take a couple of Tylenol PM and now the technique is a couple of Tylenol PM and throw some earplugs in yeah. because if not, I'm up with every snap, every crack, every noise in the woods and that kind of thing. And mm -hmm. we usually, you know, I've got, I've got five kids and my little three, you know, they're elementary, middle school kind of thing. So it's like, nobody's pulling security except for me. 
And so if right. something happens, I need to be awake and alert. So I end up normally like sucking for sleep for like two nights <laughs> when we're out backpacking and hiking and everything. But yeah, but it's just one of those things of like slowly just taking that armor off, not yeah. throwing it away, not like, you know, not forgetting and that kind of stuff or, or, or shying away from it, but just be like, you know what? Yeah, I'm in a safe place. No, it's not an ID in the road. And just keep kind of kind of driving on and that kind of thing and just allowing it to uh, yeah. just to kind of heal, if you will. Maybe having like a, a normal level of awareness as opposed to, you know, that I don't know who came up with it, but that color scheme, you know, everybody says live in yellow. But we're, you know, we've been living in, I don't think it's orange or red or whatever it is, you know, the higher level. You, so, yeah, just bringing it down to a, a manageable level, sure. not necessarily not letting your guard down, but. Yeah. Yeah, no, dude, absolutely. I mean, that's that's spot on. And, and there's a lot of things out there. There's a lot of programs out there. I'm not going to get onto it right now on, on this channel, but. Um, there's a lot of programs out there that can help guys pretty much overnight. And I, I say that loosely, incredibly loosely. We're talking about maybe four months in the sure. grand scheme of things, but there's a lot of great programs out there that are helping guys out, um, using some, uh, different plant-based medicines and different things like that, man, to just kind of yeah. really, really help dudes out in a, in a great way. And, and, um, yeah, absolutely, man. I'm a huge advocate for that, for the guys to be able to use that. For sure. Yeah. Like J, uh, JT and Brandon Temple and those guys, those guys are real advocates for the things you're talking about. And, yep. um, there's, there's that, oh, there's, man, there. there's so many different, um, so many different programs out there, which is kind of what we we're talking about. It's like, there's so much stuff out there. It's yep. good to have this funnel, this focal point where we can kind of disseminate that stuff to people. Yeah. And so that's kind of one of the things, man. So kind of how we evolved. So it was kind of funny. We had our, uh, our first ever class on like January, I think it was 19th and then January 21st ish. It doesn't really matter next week that following monday we had a meeting with the air force uh special warfare kind of like uh gathering of all the associations and foundations coming together yeah so you got combat control you've got pjs you got special reconnaissance and you obviously got tac p and uh jay kearney was in there with us on the phone and tommy and i were there and we were talking about share what we were doing for tap and um it was funny man i was like hey guys we're doing this already um we're going to keep doing this. We're just opening it up to the community and we're, I, I'm all about rebranding it to air force special warfare tap and all that kind of stuff. So we've done that, man, it is we've gone nice. through and it's now air force special warfare tap. Our website now is afswtap.org. Um, so now it's for all the other guys. We had uh, PJs, CCTs, TAC P's in the class. I don't think we had any special reconnaissance in there just yet, but I think there's like four of them anyway. So they're not getting out anytime soon. <laughs> it's pretty new. Uh, pretty new. Just pick up you guys. Love you guys. But uh, yeah, like, um, but man, it, it was awesome. Like, where, where we now, I realized that um, I couldn't keep doing this by myself. I really had yeah. to bring together a team. And so now that we've got, uh, we've got combat controllers. We've got Navy Special Warfare prior uh, prior guys. That was from some buddies from the Honor Foundation that said, "Yeah, man, I'm already helping out a few guys. I'll jump in and help you out." So, dude, nice. they're they're doing incredible stuff. I've got a whole team of guys, and one of the things I learned from that trip, um, learned a lot from that trip. But one of the main things I learned is that the Para Rescue Foundation they are so focused on resilience, dude. They've got like active duty guys. And so let's say if you're a commander or you're a SEL, and you're like, "Hey, JD needs a break." JD, you're going to go and do this two week trip paid for by the PJ Foundation, and you're going to get take a take a knee and get a breather and be reset. Wow! Right? Like that's I'm like, awesome. dude, I wish I could have had that. Like as we were no going doubt, through. right? So, yeah, yeah. so that's one of the things, man. Like so, bringing in some some of those PJs there with us, man. Some solid man, like huge hearts for the communities. Um, there we have resilience coordinators now, and so we're in our infancy stages of getting these programs running and getting connections and getting plugged in. But now, if you go into our, our Air Force Special Warfare tap, AFSWTAP.org. You're going to see, like, start with you, and you're going to have the Commit Foundation, the Honor Foundation, and then you're going to have all just a list of all these veteran resilience programs, man, that guys can do. Doing like uh, Quiet Waters, I think, is one of them. Um, okay. And just a lot of different programs out there where guys can just take a week. And that's what we'll do is we'll talk to them and say, hey, just get signed up for this class. And if you, when you get accepted for this event or whatever this trip is, just take a week and just decompress. Just leave your phone away. Don't talk to mama. Journal if you own a journal. I'm not a big journaler, but some guys like they need to journal that kind of thing. Um, and just, just picture yourself like retired or, or ETS or whatever, and just kind of decompress, man. Just take that kid off for a little bit. And yeah. I had the opportunity to be able to do that uh, from an invite from one of our guys. And man, I, I just remember fly fishing on the uh, Green River there in Wyoming, and I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, I, I had a feeling that I was done, but now I know that I'm done. Like, this is yeah. incredible just to go fly fishing. And uh, so that 
definitely grateful for that opportunity, man. It's just trying to get guys to be aware of it too and just sign up for these programs. And you know, it's funny, man, there's just stigmas that are out there, right? Like, well, I don't, I don't want to take a slot from somebody else. I'm like, uh, okay. Right. So like, there's no criteria and that's just ego talking, right? Like, well, mine's not as bad as this other person. So I don't want, you know, I don't want to bruise my ego. It's like, no, bro. Like, they do it, it's that. it's ego, but it's also like it, it. It's almost exactly what we're trying to do is look out for each other. But we don't we don't want to look at it out for each other so much that it's a detriment to ourselves. Like we have to look. Yeah. Out, you, we are included in everyone, so you know you have to look out for yourself just as much as you look out for your bros. And, but, and if it's your like turn, it's your turn. Go. Yeah. What's that? It's almost like this martyrism where I'm just going to sacrifice myself. You guys go ahead. Right. Right. You, right. You guys go ahead. I'm just I'm yeah. just going to be over here, you know, falling apart and cracking, suffering up. in silence, and yeah. Dude. A lot of guys yeah, not, do it, man. Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. It's crazy how like it's funny whenever you take off that um you take off that armor and you're talking to somebody and shit, dude, the same feelings, same emotions, you're going through the same stuff together. Right. And it's one of those things where it's funny, like whenever we were going through the pipeline together, going through training and everything, it's like you look over and you're like, You're sucking when I'm sucking when we haven't slept for days, and it's just we're we're both looking at you like, Yeah, man, I got your back, you got mine. And then right. For whatever reason, as guys are transitioning out, they think they're an island unto themselves. And it's like, no, bro, like that's one of the things I gotta speak highly of with the association and the foundation is how much this these group of, of people care about the yeah. community, man. It, it's so incredible, man. Like um sure. just the just the how do we serve, how do we do this? And I think that's one of the big things that we're trying to do right now with the association and the foundation. And I can speak on pretty pretty competently on this because I'm part of I'm plugged in with these guys. We want to take it to the next level, man. We want to do this as actually like a voice for the voiceless, man. A voice for the TACPs, a voice for just Air Force Special Warfare through lobbying and getting plugged in with just actually running this like a straight up business versus a uh, strategic booster club is what I like to joke around about. Right? <laughs> right, right. It's a solid booster club where maybe we have one burger burn and we celebrate having 300 people <laughs> at the burger burn once a year at a reunion kind of thing, right? And right, right. So we're wanting to take it to the next level and really get plugged in and really share um what we're doing because man honestly like think about it we're the ones that are called when the seals and the ranger and this i say it's out of humility i say it's not like too gloating but yeah. the army can't army they call us to come in and make the bad guys go away right when the marine sure. you know marines have their own jtacs and we have like when people can't get make the bad guys go away fast enough they call in the jtacs and we just through our radios, man, work some magic and, and some crazy. Well, we would make guys just disappear and delete like people at really quick. Yeah, I'm like, we are not capitalizing on that public relate that that PR like campaign, man. We're not like capitalizing. Hey, we're the ones everybody calls and um, whenever they need help and need things to go away or and or honestly, man, I remember. Dude, I'll never forget this, man. I won't say any names here. But we're in the middle of a firefight. It's pretty intense and three sided. You know, typical Afghan three sided ambush, right? Uh huh. Dude, freaking PL looks at me. He's like, hey. I need you to get on the SATCOM and do X, Y, Z, talk to blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, I, I can do that. Or, or you want me, you want me to drop these bombs? You've got an RTO right there. Like you want me to get on the radio? I can do that. I can, sure. Yeah. He <laughs> right. just looked at me. He was so pissed. He's like, just go fucking kill those guys. Or whatever. I guess I'm like, right <laughs> that. like, sounds good, sir. But yeah. we, we do, man. Like we're kind of like nerds with muscles, dude. Like we're able to yeah. bring out so much coordination or, and really, you know, hats off to how our, our, our forefathers in the community structured us because we're not we're not beckoned to the officermanship that's out there. Are they dealing with different officers and, and having to like the raiders and all that kind of jazz? Um, and additionally, we're not uh, restricted by the army staff because it's right. funny, man. It, it, you've probably seen this too, where you're in there and you're talking and you're in like a, a, a target working matrix or working group or whatever, right? Yeah. And you speak of like, hey, that's kind of dumb. Like, why don't we do this, this, and this? And like the captains are over there like, Thank you so much. Yeah, you right. that yeah. Like, yeah, it's a really good idea. Let's go with that Air Force. And you're like, yeah, absolutely. So. Everybody's so worried about, you know, stepping out of line or saying the wrong thing that they don't want to. That we have that luxury because we're not, there's nothing to lose really on. Yeah. On like, what, yeah what are you going to sure. do? Like, that yeah. Kind of yeah. So, um, yeah. So I think that's all those little nuggets, man, kind of fit into this, like, getting guys to realize those small little interactions. I mean, when you're talking to an S3 or, or a battalion commander, or brigade commander, you're talking to a C-suite executive sure. and you're telling them what they need to know and how they need to know it, how they need to execute and how they need to get things done. Not right. being one of the minions on the staff, just plugging away and you know, Yo, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. That kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And so it's getting guys to realize that man and getting them. It's really cool to see them when I say, as they kind of grow and, and kind of do those things. And, uh, 
and go from there, man. If, and that's kind of like the, the next step is figuring out how do we, if I could do this full time, brother, I would, I would, I would totally do this. I just got to figure out how to monetize it where I can take care of my family and still take care of the community. So right now it's just a lot of long hour, long hours, long nights, that kind of stuff, which I have no problem doing. It's just one of those things of like, all right, sustainability, how long can I keep this up? How long, how, how big do we need to keep growing this team? And, you know, it'd be great to compensate our team too. That all these guys are sure. these hours in too. Like it's one of those things where, um, I don't know. It's just, it's just, uh, well, you know, as you've gotten out of the military, man, your time is so much precious compared oh, to whatever you're in. Yeah. It's very limited, very precious. You have family, you have, you know, it's, you, you try not to do what you did in the military where you sacrifice everything for the mission and the deployments and everything. So now you're out and yeah, you really have to, it's really important to, to manage that time because you, I mean, yeah. And that, and what you brought up was a good point. I mean, there for you guys to step, I mean, that's what people forget is like, you're doing this all out of the goodness of your heart, frankly. I mean, it's, you know, it's good work and everything, but yeah, you're not being compensated for it. And people are like, well, you shouldn't be, I, I, I think, I, I think you should be, I think there, I think this should be more. Cause I mean, they have nonprofits out there where people, you know, get a paycheck and they get, they get paid for their the service. NFL is a nonprofit. Exactly. So that's, I mean, it's not unheard of. I don't think you're, I don't think you and the guys you're working with are out of line to want that particular thing. I mean, that's, you're doing great work and it should be, that should be recognized and it should be compensated for sure. Well, that way know. you can, that way, cause what, I mean, what you're doing now is you're essentially your, like you said, your valuable, precious free time is you're using that for this effort, which is almost kind of like even more commendable than anything else because you're using that free time, you know, for no money at all. But if they could somehow, you know, formulate this thing to like a, like a no kidding nonprofit, then you could quit doing whatever else you're doing. And yeah, you know, as far as for money and just focus on this, which would be even better because then you could focus all your time and effort that you would normally fo focus towards oh. getting a paycheck to this. And I think it'd be a lot better for yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely, man. And there's talks and the things like that. And we're not looking at, we're not looking at instilling dues or anything to people and that kind of no, stuff. No, no. Right? <laughs> I can already hear the comments now. Oh, like, you know, like, fine, you got me. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, or some uh, one of the things. Uh, so I created like an LLC on the side to try like experiment on like how can we do this right? And yeah. it was Aspect Collective, right? It was essentially, and it's still going. We're wanting to make it happen. I just haven't been able to put as much time and energy into it, but it's about bringing businesses together and like-minded businesses, and basically people vote with their dollar nowadays. So, yeah. you know, I use the example, I don't have my wallet here on me, but the example I use is like the wallet that I bought at Dillard's, right? I spent like 35 bucks on it. Had I known about Celtic Shield, I would have spent 55, 60 bucks knowing I was supporting one of my brothers who does, a, has his own business, right? And I'm not going right, to do the right. whole, hey man, I know you used to give me a discount. It's like, no dude, like hats off no. to you. I'd much rather give you more money than exactly. get some Dillard's or Walmart or Costco or whatever people buy their stuff at from. And so that's kind of what we were trying to look at with Aspect Collective of bringing that in and kind of getting that up and running. Actually, it was a, a TACP spouse, Natalia Plons, my partner in crime with that, uh, that vision, that project, um, who brought it up to me. She's like, hey, I brought this up to a lot of other people. And I'm like, this is freaking awesome. This is one catalyst and one way of being able to like bring people together and and really kind of get things uh, going in that direction. But, you know, I think, man, that the biggest thing is, is think about this thing. You know, I think... Um, I came into the community about 07 time frame, So, you know, right when things in the surge are starting to kick off and that kind of stuff. And our leaders at that time, I think they did a really great job for us. They did a really good job of, even though we didn't like it, instilling a lot of Air Force core values and a lot of like corporate stink on us, making us wear our, our correct uniforms and correct boots. I remember seeing a combat controller and this is, I don't know, we were taking our test for staff sergeant. He shows up with like Merrill boots and like, you know, a cutoff kind of shirt or whatever. And I'm like, dude, what? this is, this is weird. Like how yeah. is this person even, you know, allowed to this do is promotion that? testing? Yes. Yeah. Promotion <laughs> in the field. Yeah. This is exactly right. And I'm just like, yeah. okay, whatever, you know, that kind of thing. And then as I continue to study and learn and see our leaders were kind of getting us set up to kind of be this like golden child for the air force. And it's kind of funny how we are slowly getting into that realm, especially for ACC. And if ACC is loving us, um, that's pretty good because now they're yeah. giving us some of their flying monies. I mean, think about right, the budget right. for the fuels for some of these aircraft. And we're like, dude, could we just get half of that? That'd be awesome. Exactly. Um, but now think about it having so much more power and, and so much more powerful for the community to be able to be an advocate as a private citizen, talking sure. to Congress and talking to those different things saying, Hey, 
have you, you ever heard about tech peas? Like this is what they're doing. And then X, Y, Z, next thing you know, things start falling into place. You know, we, we're, yeah. we're learning and, and we're growing with other organizations and different things and kind of going that route. So it'll be a point where we'll be able to be a voice for the voiceless, not just for TACP, but even for the Air Force Special Warfare community, man. Um, awesome. We can be out there and speak out for them because, yeah, we bring a lot to the fight. And you know what? Warfare is going to evolve. And yeah. unfortunately, you know, unfortunately, we've got a lot of uh, well, I'm, I'm probably I can say this now if I want to. We got a lot of senior leaders, man. They're just kind of stuck in their ways. And they are, they don't see the bigger picture because they're kind of have like the blinders on to their one platform or to their one solution. And it's like, no, man, we've got to, we've got to think like four dimensionally almost sure. or that kind of thing of being able to do so much different things out there. So, you know, it's exciting uh, to see the career field of where it's gone. I mean, for the pipeline these guys are going through and doing now is incredible. Uh, we're great. getting some stellar, stellar guys coming through and, and, you know, it's, it's, they don't have the, uh, they have a lot of book knowledge. They have a lot of book experience and, and practical, like control environment experiences. Um, but that's okay because um, they're going to be able to get that experience as they continue to train and continue to do things and kind of go on from there. So, man, it's incredible for the community. And, and whenever guys get out, it's even more incredible just to see them succeed and go and do incredible things too, man. And oh yeah, it's not that you got a golden spoon. It's not, it's just honestly, dude, it's just knowing how to connect and communicate with people. And, right. and really figuring out what you want to do. And, and that's kind of the example I give to them is that, you know, if you were going to do a land nav, you're not just going to walk north. You're going to walk on a specific azimuth that you're going to go to, right? Right. And so it's getting guys to dial in that azimuth. And maybe it's plus or minus 10, maybe, and then maybe plus or minus 5. And it's just going to kind of take a few, a little bit of time and just give themselves grace to sit back and, and enjoy it. You know, I messaged one of my buddies and I sat down with him and we talked to him with his game plan and, he, he's got he's getting ready to cross over into private you know private civilian kind of life right and i'm like dude just breathe and relax and enjoy the ride um right. you've done all the training you've done all the stuff you've got everything set up so just sit back and just just enjoy it man because stressing about it and worrying about it it's not gonna do any good and you know i got another friend dude this guy was bouncing all over the place and he's trying to help him out trying to help him out obviously my coaching style or technique wasn't working out for this particular individual and it was one of those like uh i just had to kind of like back up step step away like hey man you're gonna have to figure it out like i don't know what to tell you um yeah. because they were they were so stressed and worried and so stressed and worried and i get it i totally get it i mean I, like i was sharing earlier in the, in the call man um you know guys are worried about how am i going to take care of my family yeah. like what am i going to do and it's like dude you're, you're going to be fine it's just a matter of following this process and understanding this new arena that you're going to and yeah, you know, I was talking to my, uh, another friend uh, this last weekend, and I was like, "Brother, you, you mainly fought in Afghanistan and Africa." He was like, "Yeah, absolutely." I was like, "Okay, so when you went from Afghanistan, and then you transitioned to Africa, did you not have to learn a new culture to interact with, new languages to have to deal with, like new new TTPs, new ROEs? Like you had to learn different things, right?" I'm like, "Great, now you're going to the you know the the continent of civilian stand." And you're going to be going here and you're going to have to learn new different ways, new vocabulary, but it's all the same. Shit. It's all the same like doctrine. You're just going to have to apply it in just a little bit different ways. It's like, ah, oh, that totally makes sense. And I'm like, light bulb went on. Dude, it, it's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. And so if guys are getting light bulbs like that, man, that's, that's when it's, it's totally worth it for that piece, man, to help these guys and get it. It's, you know, sometimes it's the guys that are like, Oh, I'll figure this out on my own. And then it's like, okay, dude, dude sounds good, man. I'm, I'm here. If you need me, hit me up. Exactly. And then yeah, you can, but why? You know, like, there's no reason to suffer like that. There's no reason to just muddle through and finally get that, you know, that nugget of information that cat catapults you to the next level. Why not just have somebody give it to you? You know, yeah. like, use the use the resources out there and just have, you know, take take the help. I think what I mean, like you said before, I think we're we have a little bit of martyrdom going on where we want to do everything ourselves, and if we, you know, we'll suffer through it until we find, you know, we want we're very self sustaining and. Um, but it doesn't need to be that way. And another thing you kind of, you talked about was like in the military, everything's got to be wired tight and every, I got to have a plan and you know, everything's got to be figured out already. But then like you were saying, sometimes now it's, it's a time to just relax and sit back and kind of let it happen. Like, you know, be more receptive to other things and yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe more comfortable with not having everything in a, all your ducks in a row per se or something like that. Dude, yeah. That's, that's yeah. spot on, man. JD, that's <laughs> spot on. Like, you know, it's kind of funny with my current job that I'm doing now, um after i had one of those those events and weekends and everything it was absolutely incredible for me and my wife um 
I came back and talked to my manager saying, hey, I'm just going to let you know that I'm probably going to start work till nine o'clock now because that, that I'm on East Coast or uh, Mountain Standard Time there on East Coast. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, for, for the last probably f- three months that I've been working here, for, I've been working here for six months. So like probably the last four months, five months, I'll come in right after I work out, sit at the computer, check emails at like 630. And dude, I'm working till like seven o'clock at night with some sporadic things here and there that I'm doing for myself. And I'm like, I'm putting in 12, 14 hour days almost. Yeah. And so I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to do nine o'clock. I'm just going to take that. And she's like, absolutely. That sounds great. I think that's awesome. I didn't know you were having issues with that. Thanks for letting me know, but 100%. Now granted, not everybody's going to have the same experience with that piece, but I think what I'm seeing with industry now, more and more industry is going to this whole like holistic, take care of yourself, be resilient, sure. great working environment, a lot of those different things. And, and, you know, it's paying dividends. I think Simon Sinek was the one that said that people will work for less money if they know they're valued and appreciated um versus trying to get paid more money and being a miserable job that you know just burns oh, for sure. i mean that's and, and plus if they're goal oriented a, a business is going to allow their workers to do what it takes to get them to that to that goal you know yeah you can come in at 7 30 and leave at 4 30 and not do a damn thing but that doesn't do anything for the company right yeah. so like if you're coming in at nine and leaving at two or whatever the wherever the hours are but you're crushing and you're you're making money or whatever that you need for these for this company then who cares yeah right? Yeah, exactly. Let's right. Go. I mean, it, it, yeah. I, you know, so that's exactly right, man. And, you know, it's funny. It goes back to, you know, one of the lessons uh, from Rogers Rangers is you give somebody responsibility and they're going to take and own it and run and do great things with it. Right. But if you get if you, you know, you take a little bit of responsibility and say you will be here at nine and you'll leave at five and you're going to do that Monday through Friday. It's like, OK, well, I'll just show up at nine and leave at five. You're telling me what to do yeah. versus giving them a little bit of ownership of like, hey, you own this, take this, run with this, make this happen kind of thing. It's it's just little lessons, man. I mean, I, I, and that's kind of the funny thing is, is that I had guys that were helping me out as I was moving forward and they were putting their hand out, lifting me up. And that's really, man, from like Romero's point of view with this program, it's just reaching back and helping out my younger brothers as they're coming out and, you know, as they're getting through there and just getting them to realize some different things and different programs that are out there and, and, um, and just getting to make sure it's okay. Like it's, it's okay. I, I I don't feel like I'm one of those guys that's going in and trying to get every single discount, trying to get everything and exploiting the system. It's more so of understanding what's out there. And then if I can, if I can elevate and, and elevate my name and my family and our, and our community and everything else like that, what's this only going to help out our brotherhood? It's only going to help out so many other people. And that ties back into that vision of like, okay, how are we going to be more successful than our World War II veterans whenever they were getting out, right? Now, that's not discounting what they did. They did absolutely, I mean, hell, dude, I use USA. Like, it's right, uh, right. everybody in the military. That's your second form of military ID is your USA debit card, <laughs> right? Like, exactly. um, and, and so it's incredible to see what they've done. I'm sitting here going, like, all right, how do we connect with ourselves and do that? And, you know, I'll tell you, man, um, the other branches, Marines, once a Marine, always a Marine. You meet another Marine, they're Marines, and they start doing their Marine stuff or whatever, right? Jarhead stuff right, or whatever, yeah. right? Army, loosely the same, dude. Like, if they yeah. were if they were in the same platoon together in some place, oh, dude, that's my brother, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is tight-knit. An ASOS. It, it, yeah, dude, we're, we're almost like house cats to some degree. Yeah, we'll let you pet us every now and then, but I'll, we'll bite your face off. Uh, right. go, go in the corner and disappear it's we're, we're very uh it, it's very uh interesting to see like you know and you probably saw this too man like uh, especially on the conventional side when you deployed you're going with this platoon and company or you're going this platoon with company and so you're bouncing around yeah and you know if you're in one of those deployments where it's like people are dying and people are fighting it's like yeah i want to be connected with you but there's still like this like i've got to go and i've got to go do other stuff so you're like almost like this person being bounced around. So there's a lot of that sure. trauma that, that our guys have that almost kind of conditions them to be this like individual. I'm going to figure it out yeah. and do it myself. Like, you know, and that kind of stuff. I mean, that's a great point. Yeah. I never even thought about it. I never even put the two together, but that's true. You know, like in the soft community, especially for the Rangers, it, it was not like that at all. So yeah. a lot of our guys have a little, a real strong bond and a relationship with with the rangers you know but but yeah with for conventional guys they like they get in these scrape scrape after scrape after scrape but it, it may be with a different unit every time so it's they it's hard to bond over it i mean i'm sure i know a lot of guys do and i, I was talking to some dudes who, who have done that but that'd be it'd be so challenging to to you know have a, a lasting relationship with with a unit that you were only with like a couple of months maybe and then yeah. you go to the next one and or 
or maybe you went on this deployment and then you know the next deployment's a totally different might even be the same division it might be a totally different army unit you know just yeah. because we're in to go back to your point i mean we're so sought after as, because of what we bring to the fight that it's just like uh, we they just put in a request for forces up for a jtac and then it, whoever's available you know that's who you get 914 is 914 man yeah <laughs> right you know? like, exactly they don't really care in that sense like oh you're jtac cool we need you exactly um, yeah yeah dude and that's uh you know i did um i had some buddies of mine uh serpa great guy another great man great human being just great person you know learned from we went through seer school together and that kind of stuff and um he went over to that side and so I kept in touch with him. I was learning some different things with him. And I was trying to bring some of those lessons in when I was at the 14th there until I like, get plugged in and go meet your battalion, go meet your team, go meet you all this stuff, get plugged in with them. And I managed yeah. to successfully do that for, for one of my deployments. I, uh, that's back when we were doing, uh, the whole ripping out halfway through kind of thing. Okay. And, um, it was with the 473rd calf. And so I was deployed with them in 2010. And then I deployed again with them in 2012. But when I found out that like, Hey, I'm going to deploy with them again, dude, I immediately went over there to their operations and started connecting with them, going to doing trainings and air assaults with them and all that kind of stuff. And dude, like when I showed up in country, they're like the, the, the fob mayor, Hey, sir V I got you, you and your guys over here. Yada, yada. And I was like, Oh dude, that's awesome. Like we already got your bag set up. We're all, I'm like, this is fucking rock star status. Like yeah, it's yeah. legit, man. And it's yeah. because we plug in with, we plugged in and integrated and, um, yep. you know, we wore, we wore their uniforms. Like we wore the ACUs and we wore the, the patches, combat patches. I even had my SCO give one of my airmen his combat patch for being out on a mission, actually out on missions. Cause it was a, it was a jacked up situation. The, the whole, um, brigade commander made it where basically the, uh, battalion commander was the only one allowed to give, you know, clearance for fires. And so he's like, all right, well, sounds good. I guess I'm going out. So this guy was gangster, man. I love this guy. Like, <laughs> dude, he came to the talk one day and he's like, I he probably just had a bad meeting or something. He points up to the TV. He's like, I want that guy effing dead. I said, okay, sir, I hear you. Totally okay. for that. However, I don't want to go to jail. and I don't want you to go to jail. So let's get something on him and we'll totally make this guy go away. He's looked right. at me like just pissed and confused. And he's like, <laughs> all right. And he storms out of the thing. And I was like, yeah, dude, like you can't just drop a bomb, kill random people. You see them on TV. Like, exactly. I think it was some farmer at the time too. He wasn't doing anything, but. But dude, that like, kind of speaks uh, to your point that you were talking about as far as like guys don't realize that they, they have that power, like a guy, like a, an enlisted JTAC talking to a commander. I mean, that's what, that's the kind of skills you can bring to the outside. I mean, like that's, yeah. you were advising that guy and saving, saving your guys' ass and, get me out of trouble. And you know, uh, that's, that's the same kind of thing these guys can do when they get out as well. Dude, it's, it's that spot on JD. Like it's, and it's getting guys just to, just to translate it, just even for PJs, man, like some PJs, they don't want to be in the medical field whenever they get out. Right. Like, right. but they kind of, that's the easy button. Cause they're well, for those guys. That's really the easy button. That's like for sure. easy money, easy work, that kind of thing. But um, for guys like, uh, like CCT and, and TAC P it's like, okay, I could go teach guys how to program radios. I could go like, you know, be an op four and that kind of stuff. And for some people, man, they love that. Um, I think for others that's doing that and, and got out, they're like, yeah, this is, this is the easy thing to do. I can make six figures. I can get out and do this and do what I was doing before, but it's almost like you meet them and just like the, again, their fire is just kind of like just not as bright you know, it's a little bit dim man it's like uh yeah. and, and and i'm not knocking those there's those, those opportunities for guys out there man if it's putting food on the table and take care of your family man rock on like keep doing sure. that and crushing that um i just want i just want to advocate for guys to realize like dude i work in tech like i i'm i work in cybersecurity risk management doing assessments for companies it almost reminds me of a lot like a mct checklist but you're just basically yeah, yeah. doing it for cybersecurity, and i'm like yeah, I can totally do this. I just need to learn the vocabulary and what certain things mean, but whatever, I can learn anything like that. That's, that's easy stuff. Exactly. I'm not doing, I'm not doing coding. Like that's, that's a whole nother level of like nerd speak and everything else like that. I, <laughs> I was actually in a meeting and I'm sitting there. I'm like, all I'm hearing is one zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. I'm like, ah, like um, but no man, like it's, it's one of those things where just getting guys like, Hey, go for it. And I think the honor foundation did a really good job of just getting me dreaming again. And so that's why I'm a huge advocate for them and, and the commit foundation as well. You know, the commit, the kind of differentiating between the two, the, the honor foundation is more of a, it's, it's, it's an in-person class or a virtual class, but you're meeting with people and you're connecting with people. And like, 
Uh, we had 50 people in the class that I was a part of, and, and it's a lot of interaction. It's a lot of great, wow. great interaction. And, and one of my good friends now is uh, we meet up and catch up uh, um, through Zoom or through phone calls, uh, uh, CCT guy that we were going through with it. Because it, it was a lot of SF and a lot of like uh, SEALs and that kind of stuff going through it. Um, but uh, the Commit Foundation is very similar and the, the content is very similar, but it's all like CBT training so okay. it, the, the positive with that is is while you're waiting for your class to get started you can go ahead and get started with the commit foundation and start building that foundation talking to your coach and um because you get coaches they give you actually executive level coaches that sit down with you and say okay jd like tell me what a one through ten what a ten looks like in your finances in the next five years and you're like damn i Never the 15th, that. I get paid like, uh, you know, yeah. TSP, whatever. I don't know. Like, I haven't actually sat down and thought about what my finances look like, what I want to look like I'm doing. Yeah. Um, so just getting guys to start getting those wheels going and that kind of stuff. And, you know, just recommending guys books like the 10X Rule, man. I don't know if you've ever uh, read Grant Cardone's book, uh, 10X mm -hmm. Rule. Dude, you nope. got to read it. Brother, you got to read yeah. it. So everybody's like, well, watching it, if they've made it this far, we've been going an hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> um, dude, I, I highly just that that book, plus the Rich Dad, Poor Dad's another great one. But, you know, man, the 10X Rule book was a, uh, that's what, when I opened up Cleared Hot Yoga, dude, um, single dad, had custody of my kids, taking care of them, still active duty Air Force, uh, at the ASOC, so I had a little bit less time, you know, on my, or a little bit more time on my hands. Sure, sure. And um, I got into yoga, man, actually going through my, you know, uh, just issues, divorce, that kind of stuff like that. And I got into yoga. Somebody introduced me to it. And um, oh, Rick Weingartner actually was the one who introduced to me. Like, he oh, really? was, yeah, dude, he noticed I was having a pretty bad, <laughs> dude, I lost 30 pounds in 30 days. Like it was, it was pretty, I was going through my worst nightmare kind of thing. Right. And so he noticed I was going through this. He's like, hey, V, Tomorrow, you're going to come to my house. We're going to go to a yoga class. And then you're going to, you know, that, whatever. I'm, we're going to do that. I was like, yeah, roger that, Chief. That, sure, sounds good. <laughs> and JD, as I left that class and I was driving home, like I literally was going through my worst nightmare. And um, I felt chill. I felt like completely like borderline euphoric and just present with life. And I was like, okay, there's something to this whole breathing and touching your toes kind of stuff or whatever. So I just started like studying a little bit more. And, um, yeah, dude, I, that ended up leading me to open up the yoga studio. And, and, you know, as before I read 10 X rule, I was like, I was thinking my, my thought process was, well, all right, I've got two kids. I'm taking care of them. They're in elementary and middle school. Um, I'm no support from, you know, the mom, that thing I'm doing it all. Like, how the hell am I going to like pay back? Cause I think I spent like 5,600 bucks on my yoga certification. I'm like, how am I going to make that money back up and pay for that? I'm like, okay. I can do a class on like Thursday night and a class on like Saturday morning. That'll be low impact on the kids and I can still try to make this money up and maybe I'll be able to make it. And dude, I ended up listening on Audible. Like I didn't even read the book. I didn't even own the book. I just got it on Audible. And um, dude, I went from like that thought process to when we opened up, I had 32 classes a week. I had eight instructors working for me. And dude, within a matter of eight months, we had 1800 clientele there in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I got voted best wow. studio the first year we were open. And yes. dude, like one praise to God for that piece, big time on that piece. And I can get that. That's a whole nother block if we want to do that piece. But the, the second part was just really that shifting of mindset going, why am I going to live in a small box when I could go 10 X? And if I don't make it 10 X, I'll at least get to eight X or maybe even seven X, but that's going to be a lot better than just one X. Sure. Sure. And so that a lot of those, that a lot of that's a foundational things that I'm sharing with guys that get them to think and grow and, and kind of go and expand beyond that, man. So huge book, huge book. And I and highly recommend it for people that are, are looking to do that. Even man, even just thinking big and, and getting yeah. after and going that way. So yeah, man, it's that's been awesome. a, it's been a wild ride, man. It's, and we're, we're going to see what's going to happen right now. Like, uh, it's going to be, uh, Tommy's going to be here for three weeks, four weeks or so. And it's going to be great to kind of just have my brother here and we're sharing time together, man. And, uh, sure. and just a lot of talking about like future stuff and, and yeah. just kind of really just, man, just be a force to be reckoned with, be, be, be positive, like to, to bring back, uh, you know, just a lot of the things that, uh, there's an organization called Foxtrot three. I don't know if you heard about that with Chad McCoy, but, um, I think I have, but I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. Foxtrot three, uh, threes, uh, faith, family, and freedom, man. They're not a political group. They're not any kind of affiliation. They just want people to just have faith, family, and freedom and just be able to be connected and to like plug in and just be united again, man. It's almost like the nine twelve project. I don't, I don't know if that's an actual real project or not, but it probably should be like the, you know, September 12th, like the right after nine 11, like how oh, yeah, yeah. So united, man, we were all like locked arms. And I'm like, 
we need more of that nowadays for sure so, and, and i don't think the solution is going to come from dc actually i know it's not going to come from dc it's going to come from your american people come together locking arms and, and it's kind of saying enough is enough for a lot of this stuff and just getting focused on like just continuing to do great things man it almost seems like dc like you said it's not coming from dc it almost seems like they don't want that it almost it seems like there's so much focus on keeping us on two sides as opposed to just like look i know we all have differing views but where can we meet some middle ground or like you yeah know, or, or or some acceptance even you know like i don't like your viewpoint on that but you as a guy you're you're fine or whatever you know it just seems like we're so divided that it to your point i think there needs to be a little more solidarity among yeah. the whole nation you know dude spot on man it, there's a lot of sensationalization of it right uh, sure. and, and people are just like jumping on this bandwagon or jumping on that bandwagon. And, you know, you, yeah. we're seeing hints of this already play out with when, when certain companies lose $5 billion because they thought they were going to do this one marketing gimmick. And that's what right, it was. Right. It was just a marketing gimmick, you know, because you know what, I'm sure they wouldn't do that in like, I don't know, Dubai or other right. countries where that kind of stuff, you see that stuff play out. And I think people are kind of seeing this whole like propaganda playing all these cards and all this stuff. And they're like, all right, Hey, we're, we're kind of done with this stuff. So, you know, the, the conditions are set for a revival, man. Like the conditions are set, I think, you know, you could look at it doom and gloom, but I think there's actually a lot of positive that's getting ready to come out and we're going to be, and, and it's agnostic to politics. I think right. we somehow or another created politics as this some religion or something we cared about. And I'll tell you what, man, JD, I was probably, I was probably watching news way too much, probably prior to those previous experience I just went through. And um, now I'm sitting here like, wait a minute, that stuff doesn't really matter that much. Like, it really doesn't. But that's and, the point. That's and that's the whole thing. It's like these things that they're that everybody's so fired up about. A lot of them don't even really affect any uh, most of us. And we're and it's like, well, so I mean, yeah, I guess that is bad. But this is not affecting my life, my family. And they, I think that's kind of the, by design. You know, they're like, yeah. let's get these hot button issues out there. Let's get everybody divided and fighting over the stuff. And then they. You know, yeah, I don't know. It may be, I, don't, I, don't, I don't get too tinfoil hat, but you know. <laughs> yeah, Epstein didn't kill himself, so you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah, but no, exactly, man. Like, exactly. it's uh, it's it's really cool to see kind of like direction that we're going in. So, uh, like I was saying earlier, like Department of Labor, getting back to the transition program, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude. So we're in phase like phase three. When we break into phase three, uh, guys and gals will be able to come to our program in lieu of going to their base. Um, and that's really what we're getting after right now. It's what we're working with. We've got a great point of contact from the Department of Labor. Um, and actually, one of the CCT guys who's retired CCT is on my team, Dean Unger. Uh, Dean's helping us out with that. He introduced us to uh, Jeremy. And, man, it's just a lot of great things are happening and kind of snowballing. And so it's like we've got this momentum going, and we just got to keep this momentum going and make it happen. Uh, when we get into Phase 4, man, ideally what I want to see in Phase 4 play out is now we're a feeder program in a lot of industries. Um, and not a recruiting thing, not where we're sitting here and we're recruiting and that's going to be our focus, but more so in a sense of partnering with relationships with other companies and organizations out there that are knowing that, hey, look, like you're not just getting a veteran because you and I both know not every veteran is created equally. You're getting one of the, our Air Force Special Warfare TAPS veteran has been already through this program and all these different things, which, man, you probably feel a rock. And there's, this, part, this is not the first time this has been done. And I get that. Um, however, it's the first time it's been done for Air Force Special Warfare. And um, sure. I know we bring a lot to the table in that arena um, and trying to get guys to unite in that stuff. So that's that's what we're looking at. I, I don't really have a timeline on that piece right now. I'm just focused on phase three, just getting this where um, guys and gals can come to this course and get get this all their TAPS requirements done. Um, once we get that done and we break that, break through that mold, then the next step is going, okay, Great, you've done because that's that's it, right? You go through taps and it's yeah. like, all right, great, you've done taps or you've done this program. High five, good luck. <laughs> right, exactly. And you're like, how do I get a job? Like, what? A, uh, like, oh, you'll yeah, be you fine. keep looking back, like, wait, now what? And they're like, no, no, you're done. Get yeah, out of here. You know. Oh, you know what I love? Oh, you got a TS. You're gonna be rich. You're fine. You're good. I'm like, <laughs> right. I did not have that experience, and maybe yeah. I wasn't barking up the right trees or or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, I didn't have the whole you know instant six figure salary you know whatever that kind of stuff because i have a ts um, definitely not guaranteed for sure no yeah. man it, it's really not i mean honestly i wish i would have gone to tech like i wish i would have learned to be code because ts plus like a software tech degree holy yeah. crap you're <laughs> like in denver it's like two hundred five thousand starting pay a year just for working on computers and doing that kind of stuff up there and one of their uh, uh servers that kind of stuff oh, okay yeah. yeah 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 there's probably not too many of those guys floating around so they have to make it they have to make it attractive for you to come to that company for sure. Sure. Absolutely. Right. But yeah, 
And I'll say, uh, you know, the other thing too, man, talking about getting guys to dream again and getting guys to kind of see that kind of stuff. Um, I'm actually going to be working on my MBA uh, through Wake Forest University. That was one of the colleges I was getting recruited for. Um, so it was super cool, man. Like whenever I got accepted for doing their online MBA program, I ended up actually calling my mom up and saying, hey, mom, it took me 21 years, but I'm finally going to Wake, that kind of stuff. So it's kind of cool to kind of like just get guys to do that. You know, I had a buddy of mine. I was just talking to him. Another friend, I was just talking to him uh, yesterday. Yeah, today's Saturday. Um, he's like, hey, dude, uh, I don't have a degree. I need to get my degree. What college should I go to? And I was like, well, brother, like, where did you want to go? Like, what school? Yeah. Are you? Oh, I'd really love to go to, you know, this school. And I was like, well, go to it. Like, you, got your right. job, you can do it. He's like, really? I'm like, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, go to it, man. Like, if that's what you want to do, man, that was your dream of going there. Go live your dream. And it's funny, For like, sure. I don't know if you ran into this or not, but like, even the whole, like, wait a minute. I can live anywhere in the world. Like I can go anywhere I want to go to and live there. Right. And it's, it's just, I think, well, don't you think it kind of, it kind of stems from like the military mentality. Like, what? Well, all right, now what do I do? My, I don't have any PCS orders. They tell me where to go. They tell me what yeah. to do. It's like, man, you are free. You can literally do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm going to Herbie. No, I was kidding. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, shout out to all the tech brothers down there, man. Um, yeah, no, like, yeah, uh, yeah. But that's, that's it, man. Like, it's one of those things where so even it, it was funny. We were looking at North Carolina, and North Carolina's back on the table now because they just changed their whole taxes for uh, military retirement. Um, oh, yeah. But that, you know, looking at different taxes things, you know, looking at different houses, different spots like that. Like, man, Georgia's got some beautiful houses. Their taxes yeah. suck right, <laughs> in that right. kind of sense, right? And it's funny. You'll see it on the map, too, where, like, the, the property and like the acreage and all this other stuff is all in Georgia because like Alabama and Tennessee, North Carolina have all been bought up. South Carolina have been bought up. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. So it's just, you know, it's, it's kind of cool. Like with, with our program, um, with the tap program, we have like actual people come in and share and talk about business and talk about their business that they're doing and talk about like, um, just the, the overall, like what they're getting after, like uh, DOL coaching is a project management coaching. It's really cool. And um, we're doing that. I've actually partnered up with them and, and helping out Scott Kinder with that. And it's getting guys to look at like different certifications or different things that's going on with industry or, you know, I uh, even had one guy was a retired tech P um, was a border patrol recruiter. And so he basically was doing like border patrol recruiting. And I was like, bro, like, one, I don't want your job right now in this day and age. Right. <laughs> you can come on that you can come on and talk with people and absolutely do do what you're gonna do. But man, like, don't expect too terribly much. He's like, Yeah, man, I get it. He's like, but they're offering like six figure salaries and you're out in the field and you're doing similar stuff and that kind of stuff. And I'm like, Okay, yeah. I'm like, and then I sort of of course I started asking, like, hey, is it really bad? Is it you know, is there things depicted on, you know, different channels and everything like that? And, He's like, yeah, it is. I mean, it ebbs and flows, that kind of thing. Like anything, you know, you just got to wait. He's out probably trying to, he probably doesn't want to tell you the full story because then nobody will come out <laughs> and get the job. <laughs> People get there and they're like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, but there's there's just there's just a lot of opportunities out there, man. And you know what's even cooler, though, is there's a lot of successful tech P's out there and even combat controllers, PJs, and just. Oh, for sure. And a lot of those things. And, and it's, you know, obviously we're, we're, we're getting out there and we're doing things. It's like, okay, how can we be complementary to each other? And I just keep going yeah. back to that of like, how can we help each other out? And, you know, simple analogy, but again, I would much rather buy my wallet from one of my brothers than go to Dillard's and buy a wallet and, you know, give money Definitely. to another company, you know? And so that's yep. kind of like the yeah for sure the the hidden agenda if you are the insurgency I'm trying to run with this whole program is just keep <laughs> people united and and we're getting there man like uh, our tap page on Facebook is like thousand strong right now uh, nice. which is really really good I'm trying to get people kind of moved over to our LinkedIn because it's more of a professional networking and jobs it's easier to post things like that for guys and gals but um, it's just it's just, it's a slow process because it's getting people I mean dude there's still people that don't know the difference between the foundation and the association and it's oh. like ah. Uh, it's all about messaging and branding. So like Dan Horgan, one of my good friends, and we went through uh, the Tech P Schoolhouse. I think he was a class ahead of me. Um, he's he's plugged in with us with our marketing because it's the, the value of marketing is huge, man. Like, yeah, if you don't have a marketing and a messaging campaign, good luck because you're not right, going to really right. be doing too much. Yeah, you could be like plugging away thinking you're doing the right thing and it's not hitting anybody because you're not do, you're not filling those squares or. Or doing yeah. the doing the right techniques. So I, I, one question that popped up in my uh, what? So is it strictly for people that are transitioning, or can let's say a guy's been out for like five or ten years? Can he 
still go to the website and still yep. get help or Dude, okay. absolutely 100 that's the one i don't want people i don't want people watching this and be like well man i retired like 20 years ago yeah. so i can't do anything it's like no man no nope. One I assume really, you guys can. Okay, good. Yeah, no, uh, yeah, dude, JD, absolutely. One of my, uh, one of my really good friends, man. He got out in 2014 for medical discharge. You know, I had a special place in my heart for those guys who are medically discharged because sure. it's one thing to be like, all right, I'm ETSing, I'm making a conch, I'm making a decision to get out. It's another thing right. for, hey, I'm making a decision to retire. The guys who are med boarded, man, it's like they were going 95 miles an hour on the highway, and then all of a sudden they just bit a hard left, and now they're off. And yep. so the mental health aspect of those things, man, like he's looking out for those guys and and and, and really caring for those guys and, and just looking out for their six a little bit more um, because they're the, the transition is hard enough. But to right. abruptly go, hey, you're operating and then now you're not. I mean, I saw it happen with my little brother who was in the army, man, like uh, he was he uh, he had a T barrier fall and crash on his forearm. He was a combat engineer. And so the, the, oh, the rebar broke in the top. And it crushed his forearm and he has this pretty thick Jeez. scar. And um he's like, Oh, I gotta get back to my guys, gotta get back. I was like, No, dude, like what the hell are you doing, man? Like get out, get your disability and everything, go back okay. as a contractor if you really want to go back there. No, 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 no. We goes back, RCP ends up going through freaking five IED blasts, and this fifth one just jacked up his whole body, spiral fractures and everything else like that. And dude, he struggled, man. Like he struggled with his identity of like who he was because he wasn't a soldier anymore. Right. Um, and he was trying to do the, the, the army games and all this other different, you know, spa uh, Paralympic stuff and everything else like that. And it, it, he's oh, so much better now, man, like two years sober now, like I'm super impressed with him. He's freaking awesome in that sense. Um, but the, the identity that these guys go through from like a med board piece and go through this whole transition piece, man, it, it's such a tough thing for them. But right. buddy of mine, 2014, he ends up medically getting discharged, goes and be a sheriff for a little bit. And, and as I'm talking to him, JD, like miserable, man. And I heard it in his voice. I'm like, he's like, oh, just, yeah, dude, I'm doing this. Or these guys are doing this. And it was, you know, it was a good old boy kind of sheriff's department. Well, yeah. he was a veteran who wasn't part of the good old boys kind of thing. So it was one of those those scenarios and situations. So uh, some life circumstances happened, and, and uh, he ended up um, he ended up losing his his job, and it was it was awful. But I was almost excited for him because, like, it was awful for him in the moment, and I was like, I was feeling for him and just like feeling his pain, man, and crying with him and that kind of stuff. But then on the flip side, I was like, bro, this is going to be such a great opportunity for you, man. It's going to be freaking kick ass. And so he ended it's up like being he's a, free now to to do whatever he wants to dude, do the real thing. And so, yeah, he ended up getting get a gig where he was able to kind of like uh, uh, kind of close some loose ends and get some closure and getting some closure with his uh, his past life and, and that kind of thing. And yeah, man, it's it's working out great for him. Like I'm super stoked for him. And, and so, yes, to, to answer your question, I mean, this guy got out in 2014. We're almost a decade later. and We're still helping out guys out. So uh, nice. if they're out there and they need help, man, hit us up. And uh, the foundation has been incredible. Um, it's kind of funny, man. I, I work for both, so go figure. Attack P with two freaking bosses, right? Like <laughs> right. <laughs> normal, normal is like a normal operating arena, right? Sure, sure. But um, yeah, so the foundation has been awesome with showing support. We're able to help out guys now with their resumes uh, and helping out, not paying for them, like not paying for the resume completely, but just giving them a little bit of a grant to help them out to get a professional resume done. Because that's the first nice. thing, man. You need a Granted, it's a little bit antiquated. Like your LinkedIn profile needs to be pretty solid compared to your resume, but mm -hmm. your resume is that's going to be the things they're going to ask for. Like, hey, let, let me see your resume. Let me check that out and that kind of thing. So um, we're doing well, that. Speaking of that, you got any other pointers? Like, before like, we're coming to the end here, but yeah, to, just to, to leave with people, like, you know, uh, LinkedIn profile, like you said, it needs to be pretty professional. Yeah. Help with the resume. What, what other things can you just off the top of your head are important for guys to, to land a job? Yeah. Um, don't forget to strengthen the superpower of connecting and collaborating, like um, reach out to people and, and get connected, ask them questions, be a sponge. That's going to be your biggest thing is as you're going through this, be a sponge and just take in different nuggets. You may use it now, or you may use it a little bit later on down the road, or you may get this nugget and it's not for you. It's for somebody else or one of your brothers or sisters that's getting out as well. So just be a complete sponge as you're going through this piece of just knowledge. And it's not sitting on, your phone and researching and doing all this in-depth research and dissertations, but just sign up for an event, get plugged in with a local chapter or a local wounded warrior project or a local team RWB or, or whatever it is. And just get surrounded by other like-minded veterans. And you're going to hear and they're naturally like, Oh, Oh, JD, you're getting out. 
oh, hey, man, have you thought about a VSO? And you're like, what the hell's a VSO? Well, it's a veteran support officer that's going to help you out with your VA claim. And I've met people that they tried to do it on their own and they were able to do it successfully on their own, but it was a lot of work compared to, yeah. you know, my guy, Matt here in, in Colorado Springs, dude, absolutely incredible human. and has a huge uh, heart for people. And he's like, yeah, dude, my job here is to take this big rock off your plate and help you out and help your family out as you transition out. This is what I get paid for. This is what I do. And dude, he did it flawlessly and has done, done such great stuff with that. So, you know, get plugged in with the VSO, go check out our website. We've got a lot of resources out there for you. Um, and just, enjoy the ride. Like you're getting out, you're making this chapter. Yeah, it's scary, but it's no scarier than jumping out of a plane or getting in a firefight or whatever. I mean, how much scary too, and you're still here. So, um, and just, uh, get plugged in, like you get plugged in with other guys and, and gals and then like-minded people, because it's not so much in a sense to offer up group think it's more so in a sense to offer up some sanity checks, some support there. And to realize that you're not going through it alone, because in reality, we're all here locked in this earth together and we're helping each other out and that kind of stuff. Not to sound too hippie, but, uh, you know, Definitely. it comes out a little bit here and there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, man, like, you know, tangible things, LinkedIn, huge. Feel free to go, everybody. Check out my LinkedIn profile. Uh, not because I am want my ego boosted by any means. It's more so in a sense I've had a lot of people give me critiques and I've changed a lot of different things along the way. And I try to use that as an example for guys to say, hey, look, you've got all this digital real estate, like this is what you can do with like your profile photo. And I've got mine where it's got like my company and then my side projects and then my name and different things like that versus just having like a standard canned response. Um, even your profile photo, you get signed up for Portraits of Patriots. That's another major one because you sitting there in your blues probably makes your mom and dad really happy and your family really <laughs> happy, but it's probably not gonna get you hired on for a gig. Um, okay. <laughs> And so just use that LinkedIn to, as, a, as a, it's a massive, massive, uh, powerful networking tool. Um, even like even doing introductions, right? Like it's one of those things you've probably seen this as well, where it's like, um, if I like you and I know you, I'm going to do a personal introduction with the, the person that I'm connecting you with. And I'm going to speak mm -hmm. like, hey, uh, Matt, meet JD. Uh, JD has done X, Y, Z. He's doing all these great things for the community. I'm going to speak you up and all that kind of stuff. And then JD, meet Matt. This is what's going on. That's like the top tier level of introductions. If it's yeah. like, yeah, JD, just tell him in that email. You can email him. Here's his contact info. Just tell me, you know me, that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, cool. It's a soft, like, okay, yeah, drop that in there. So just getting guys to realize there's some unwritten rules. Even LinkedIn stalking is actually a really good thing. I, I learned this through my, my hiring process. That, you know, let's just say if you're my recruiter and you're hiring me to come onto the company. Well, if you see that says, oh, Romero Villalobos viewed your profile, it, it's a positive thing because you're like, oh, you actually took time to research and, and get ready for this interview versus some guys are like, dude, that's weird. Why would I stalk them on LinkedIn? I'm like, no, <laughs> man. So LinkedIn is an incredible, yeah. powerful tool. There's a lot of classes out there. USO offers some pretty good classes for that for free um, for that piece. And then the last thing I'll say, man, is just dream again. Just just dream again of what you want to, what do you want to do before you join the military? Like when you were a kid, what did you want to do for fun? What did you want to be? And then what do you want to get after and do it? Just go do it, man. Like you've gone through combat, you've gone through deployments, you've gone through all this other shit. Now it's time to start living and start living a full life again and, and a full happy life. It doesn't have to be a life where you're, you know, dodging things on the road because you're thinking your IDs kind of stuff. You can live a, you can live a full happy life. So yeah, man, uh, okay. I could probably go on, but, We'll keep it the Reader's Digest version at an hour and forty three minutes. What was the uh, what was the website one more time? AFSWTAP.org, Air Force Special okay. Warfare Tap.org. So go check that website out. Hit us up on LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a LinkedIn closed group for Air Force Special Warfare only. Um, so hit us up on there as well. So if you're getting ready to transition, or you, or maybe I got a buddy at work who who went on there and looked at it, and he's not even close to getting out, but he wanted to get that. Kind of, he wanted to get the ball rolling. He's close. He's a senior NCO now, so yeah. he wanted to get it kind of, you know, he's got he's probably got maybe three or four or five years left. So, but he still wanted to get that knowledge and, and kind of get get the ball rolling. So he's ready for when he does pull the trigger. So it's got guys like that, guys that are getting out, and then like you said, guys that are if you are if you've been out for five, ten, twenty years, who cares? Yeah. Take a look at it. I mean, like you said, there's you have all those links on there. It's not only just business stuff. I mean, there's you know, mental health stuff or whatever. I mean, you, there are, there are resources on there you can use. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah, feel free to check these guys out for sure. Yeah. And I, I, one quick thing on that, man, 
I so encourage commanders, SELs, first artists, first line supervisors, all those guys to get on there because you know your your response to somebody saying, "Hey, I'm getting out," isn't "Oh, you're quitting on us." Your response would be like, "Man, awesome! How can I? What can I do to help you out and be incredibly stupidly successful uh, whenever you get out of the military and that kind of thing?" And no, I don't mean by bringing back equipment and radios and showing us how to program the you know ATAC, uh, but more so in the sense of like what can I do to help you out? So yeah, that's a solid point, man. Thanks for bringing that up because those guys need, they need to be on there. They need to be educated. They need to be aware of what's going on and not just, uh, Oh, you're quitting us. Well, all right. You're not going on any TDYs anymore. And you know, uh, good luck on, you know, you're going to have to convince me to do skill bridge kind of thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I can't, I can't thank you enough for doing this, man. This has been really awesome. Uh, I, I, when Tom, uh, hit me up and uh, told me about all this stuff. I mean, I couldn't wait to get you on here to, to, to tell people about it. And, and your story is interesting too. So that was a bonus. That was really cool hearing about all that stuff. So yeah, uh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Dude, it's been my pleasure. Thanks for, thanks for doing what you're doing and getting the word out there and, and letting us just be, you know, shows the community brother. Like I really appreciate what you're doing as well, man. And yeah, let's, let's keep making the things great. All right, man. All right, brother. Appreciate right. it, man. Thank you.